All right, welcome back, everybody, to Harbor Discussions. Back in the basement again. It's been, I don't even know how long. We got new decorations up. We got new stickers on the table, new guests. Today, I'm in here with Tim Lewis. If you want to quickly promote, like, your social medias, uh, listening platforms, and any shout-outs that you want to give. Hey, uh, appreciate you having me on the show, man. Uh, I go by the name Tim Lewis, as you already heard. The illest one to do it. Got you under the influence right here with Harvard Discussions, yeah. my man John. Um, so right now, I don't have any immediate shows coming up right now, but what you can do is go check out my music. I got a single out called Georgetown Freestyle. It's out right now on all platforms, you know. Okay. And we just dropped a video for it not too long ago, too. Yeah, we'll get into that for sure. Yeah, so it's, it's doing big things. Um, also got a few other things coming up in the near future, too. Got, I'm working on the project and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, let's make sure, you know, you follow me. On social media, on IG, so you can keep up on all that. Um, on IG, I go by Tim Lewis Music Official. That's T-I-M-L-E-W-I-S Music, M-U-S-I-C-O-F-F-I-C-I-A-L. There you go. Oh, so, yeah. Okay, so we'll get into personal background. And also, a lot of your music, uh, I felt like, tied into your personal background somehow. You throw in a lot of different references. So we'll tie in the music with the personal background. Normally I go very separate with it, but it'll be a little bit together on this one. Uh, I want to talk about your parents first off. Now you're inspired by your dad who was a DJ, right? Uh, yes, uh, he's been DJing since 1985. Uh, he's still doing it too, to okay. this day. Um, he slowed down a little bit, you know, he don't do like, you know, like teen parties, nothing like that, because he's older now. <laughs> the time with the patience, but you know, he still, he still does it, you know, he does like little small things here and there. Um, like weddings, family reunions, and stuff like that. Um, so, but uh, yeah, he's really been the main influence for me because you know he's like basically the one who kind of introduced me to, like all this music and stuff like hip hop and R and B, uh, jazz, go go. You know what I'm saying? So like a lot of that just came from him. You know, just be in the car. You know, pl he'd be playing one of his mixes and stuff like that, or I might tag along, you know, and watch him play, do his thing and stuff. So, you know. Okay, so it wasn't just a like a pastime passion, it was a career for him? Yeah, like um, he's been, you know, I guess since, I guess right before he graduated high school, so he's been doing it since high school, you know, since 85, and, you know, now, it, you know, he's still doing it. So, I mean, it's just a testament to, you know, him doing his thing. I mean, he, he has his, his job, he does too, but, you know, DJing is still his passion and stuff too. Cool. So. Go a little bit more in depth on like what you've witnessed and experienced being around him, and like what he actually put you on to that you still use in your music. Um, just you know, he's just a hard worker, you know, um, just that grind, you know. Uh, I got tagged along with him, helped him set up a few times, uh, and just hung back, you know, just watch him do his thing. Um, and, you know, he, he paid me a few times for that too. So it was nice to get had a little extra change in my pocket, you know, so can't be mad at that. Yeah. Um, I think it was one time in particular, I tagged along with him. He did this graduation party, uh, back in 07 and, you know, it's like a DMV, you know, he playing go-go. Um, of course, for those that don't know, like go-go music, is like, you know, a genre of music out, you know, in the DC metropolitan area. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So uh, sometimes, you know, at the at those things like at go-go's, it can get a little rowdy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so he's playing go-go, and uh, one of the guys, you know, he was beating his feet, you know, jumping up and down, you know, and he lost his balance and you know, bumped into the DJ table and knocked over a speaker. Oh no! Yeah, so. I don't know if you ever seen the movie House Party. Uh, it's okay, this yeah. one scene where um, the dude chill. He bumps into the DJ booth and Martin Lawrence, the DJ, he gets all <laughs> mad and irritated. He's like, yo, chill, chill. You know, so it's basically like that. I basically saw that happen like in real life, in real time. You know, it's like, it was like, look, I saw a speaker fall. It was like, it was like a slow motion. I was like, it's nothing we could do about it. <laughs> so, but thankfully, you know, nothing was damaged. Like it, it was still work. We got it up. And, uh, but I thought at that moment, I thought, you know, the party was over. I, I, right. Like I started I start packing <laughs> shit up. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, it's time to go. <laughs> but now, you know, he, he was cool, you know, kept the party going. And, you know, that says a lot about him. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he knows kids out there just having fun and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, 
but he said like look y'all gotta chill out though <laughs> <You know? I laughs> relax I, I think it's a video of biggie where he like threw a bottle at his like mc or something like that yeah i think the dj kept messing up the <laughs> song and stuff so or he played the wrong song so he threw a bottle he got frustrated yeah so, so yeah um so i wanted to ask you this do you think that the true art of spinning records is kind of losing its way with how technology is advancing uh i mean technology is always going to be a factor it's always going to change things i mean you always want to you know elevate and go bigger and better but you know uh it definitely does lose some of its authenticity a little bit you know where you just like scratch and stuff where you just turn a computer and it's like okay you got the the board on the screen and stuff like that but you know it's not like the actual records you know like we don't use djs don't use records anymore you know right like, like everything's digital now everything's streaming so it does kind of change things i don't know i can't really say if it's for the better or not you know what i'm saying like i'm not a dj so i don't know how that how that will affect them or whatnot but i don't know i guess i guess you can get to the songs quicker you know so yeah but uh I, I don't know. It's like it's like a give and take thing. Yeah. What are your thoughts on like people who say, "Oh, DJs, they just push buttons and hit pause and play. It's not hard." Uh, I wouldn't say it's not hard. Like it's still it's still some effort that goes into it. You know, it's still yeah. a talent that you need. You know, you, you still got to know. Uh, you still got to match up certain beats and cue and cue them up and stuff. Um, so it's definitely like a lot more that goes into it than you think. And that's just me from experience, just watching my dad play and watch him do his thing you know like he does like use like his laptop too and you know right. he, he has like like they still have turntables but it's not like records and stuff you know yeah like um you might slide like a cd in you know but shoot we don't even use cds anymore so yeah like, that's why I, I started like putting up some vinyl records and stuff like that and some cassette tapes and cds like over there because like especially like in the hardcore punk scene like we were talking about earlier um really big movement to like keep physical copies alive you know people still releasing cassette tapes in 2023 even though like don't nobody know where to buy a cassette you know something to play cassettes on right i don't even know if they make new cassette you know they probably do somewhere but it you know they ain't selling them at target and walmart nah. so you got to go out of your way to really listen to stuff on physical but it kind of I, th I think it brings back some of that authenticity you know like or just realness to the sound a lot of people talk about how music nowadays isn't um doesn't have as much of a real feeling anymore kind of like old classic stuff does yeah i mean i don't know man it's like everybody just wants to do what's popular yeah you know, everybody wants to follow a trend you know they want to follow a specific type of flow like i do my own thing um Sometimes it's not a bad thing to do what's trendy, you know, just to kind of test things out because, I mean, that's what the mass is like. So you got, like I said, it's like the music business is like give and take. You got to do a little something for them. You got to do something for you, you know. So, but some, at the same time, you still got to, like, stay true to yourself. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to, like, go too far out of your element, you know. Otherwise, you know, you're just going to be like everybody else. You're not going to stand out. Yeah, I have said this before on my Instagram. I, I'm not going to follow, like, all the Instagram trends that people use to get numbers and stuff like that. Like, one of them is, like, using those trending audios and stuff like that. Like, you know the one where people like to show, like, how many followers they have? And then yeah. it's like, reduce your expectations to zero, mm -hmm. you know? I, just in general, when it comes to stuff like that, I'm like, I'm not going to do that because... My stuff's not trendy. It's not meant to be trendy. It's meant for like 10 years down the road when you and all the other artists that I've had on have blown up and gotten huge. People going to come back and be like, that was the early interview and stuff like that. So like, it's not a trend. And I feel like people that follow trends, they always talk about how like eventually there's that downfall where none of the trends that they were doing are trendy now. Oh. So they're like, their numbers go shoo, right down to the bottom and then they hit like a super low point in their life because they were never like doing something that they actually, you know, something like music, something, you know, because music and everything like that, I feel like is very personal. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's definitely a feeling, you know what I'm saying, that a trendy shit, you know, eventually it's going to like run out, man. It's going to yeah. lose its light, you know. Um, just got to do, like I said, to stay true to you you know, do you at the end of the day, you know, music is like, 
it's like a feeling, you know, you got, you got, you got to say what you feel, you know, you got to believe what you say, you know, otherwise the people, the, the consumers, the listeners, they got, they're not going to believe you. Right. You know? So you just got to stay true to you at the end of the day. Yeah. I like the term hopping on trends. It's cool to hop on a trend. Cause that means you're going to hop off. You know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. Cause like when a funny meme goes popular, you know, it might be cool to like spin your, you know, brand with that on put it on a shirt or something like that or you know put it on a flyer or a post and you know everything like that you know it's like you said some trends are you know it's yeah. good to follow trends but yeah from time to time it's cool like and like not not even like talking about music but just like as far as like promoting yourself yeah like, you know how they got reels and stuff on instagram uh-huh. they got tiktoks and people got these funny videos or dub voiceovers and stuff so yeah, like I got some of those on my page too. If you probably notice, yeah, um, it's just ways just kind of get stuff out there, show that people you got some personality or whatnot, and uh, different interests and stuff. Um, so it's cool for those. Um, it's just when you do too much of it, sometimes too much. It can be too much of something, you know. Yeah. So, like I said, a little bit, but not too much. You know? Yeah, I think people. It's people that make trends their whole personality like their whole right. image is just hopping on the next trend but it's different when someone has their own thing established and then they use trends to kind of boost their thing boost their message you know what i mean yeah. and if they can somehow even incorporate something trendy into their message you know exactly i try not to do it if it doesn't make sense you know what i mean like with what i do like a lot of those trends and audios and stuff like that they got nothing to do with the kind of people that i talk to like the kind of music that they play has nothing to do with anything that's trending right now, which is why I'm doing what I do because I want these people to get some recognition. Yeah. And it's like it's a weird thing cuz like you could totally use those audios and like justify it as like, "Oh yeah, I'm doing it to, you know, help these people," but it's like, I don't know, they probably wouldn't even they'd look at it and go, "What the hell is this?" Yeah. you know. And for a lot of them people like from what I heard, at least for the people on TikTok, you could upload something and somebody could come around and copyright, you know, your audio. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And they could reuse that. And every time somebody re repost that and reuses that or remixes it, like they, they make money off of that. So, right. So, yeah. So people out there, you know, TikTok, make sure you patent your shit, you know, or just be careful, you know. Yeah, that's something I've been like considering on doing with the uh, Harbor Discussions name and stuff like that. It's like, it's kind of a thing that's weird to consider when you're not too big yet you know what i mean it's like should it is it something to worry about when you're like early on do you think or do you think you should wait until you're getting like maybe making money off of it or something like that i say just take care of all that right now you know what i'm saying don't put off tomorrow what you can do today you know what i'm saying like uh like i got my publishing all that set up um all that stuff, like illustrated entertainment, that's my publishing. You okay. Know, hopefully one day I can turn that to a label. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Just build on that. Um, but, you know, the main thing is just take care of all that paperwork, take care of all the groundwork, take care of all that, you know, right away as soon as possible. Yeah, um, I know sometimes it, it might cost like a little money. That's not that much. You know, you you just pay like a one-time fee and that's it. It's yours. You know what Yeah, I'm that's why I like working a nine to five is like kind of like something to do to boost you know, you got to have money from your pa- for your passion somehow. You know what I mean? It sucks. But. Oh, yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not going to get anywhere without spending money. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You got to spend money to make money. Um, pe- you know, when you're young, you start out, you feel like you're entitled. You think, oh, I'm nice. I'm nice. I'm supposed <laughs> to get free studio time. Or uh, I'm, I'm, a spit, I'm, no. I'm going to the studio and spit, like, the best, the highest verse ever. And <clears> the <throat> producer is going to... You know, just give me, or the engineer going to give me all this free studio time and the producer's going to give me all these free beats. I'm like, nah, Slim, it don't work like that because people, you, you, you want these people time and, you know what I'm saying, they doing the service for you and people do a service for you, you got to pay them back for that, you know. Um, so just like with anything, it's like people think, well, just because you're nice or whatever, you might be talented, you could be good, you could be great. But you still got to pay up at some point. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to get through life without paying up something. Even freedom ain't free. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. nothing, nothing in life is free. You're going to have to pay up at some point. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, when I interview bands at the auto bar or the Metro, like, I, they don't ask me to pay them anything to talk to them. But, like, I live, like, 45 minutes from the auto bar. So, I got to fill up my car with gas to get out there, you know, equipment, all that sort of stuff. Um... 
the song for Lynn is about your late mother, correct? Yes. Um, explain, because I read, you know, she would put everyone before herself, right? And do you want to, like, give some examples of that? Yeah. Um, so she passed away in July 2008. So an anniversary was, like, uh, just, like, a week or so ago. Um, no, a month ago. A month ago. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, like, she, she definitely sacrificed, you know, it was just me, her, and my younger sister, so, and she was working, like, overnight at the post office, you know what I'm saying, so, um, I remember before I was old enough to stay in the house by myself and watch my sister, you know, she would drop us off at my grandmother's house, we spend the night there, and then she'd pick us up in the morning when she'd get off, and then we go to school, you know, and then repeat, do the thing over again until, like, the weekend when she had off, so, that was really the routine, and, you know, so, but yeah, she definitely did a lot for me and my sister. Like, I'm not going to say we was like dirt poor or nothing, but it was times where I could see it was hard for, you know. Definitely. So, you know, like single parent, you know, got two kids. Um, but that was 2008. I know the economy, it wasn't great, but it wasn't like what it is now, you know, like post COVID and everything. Yeah. But, you know, I can only imagine what, what parents be going through now, especially if you're a single parent. Like, you know, I, I feel for y'all and I, I got so much respect. For anybody that's holding it down, if you're a single parent, you know, mom or dad, you know, you're holding it down for your kids. But, uh, yeah, and they, it, I feel like if you are a single parent, like, stop listening to Facebook and Instagram. Cause absolutely. I look at posts, you know, it, you yeah. just come across shit in your algorithm, and uh, somehow I'll end up on a teen baby mom somehow. Yeah. And the comments are crazy. People talking about, oh, you should, you know, you shouldn't be feeding them this. You should be like, yo, you're not going to win yeah. by listening to other people. Yeah. And that, that goes for everything. Yeah, social media got the game jacked up, man. Um, but, yeah, she, yeah, I, I don't know how, how she would deal with social media, you know. So I'm, I'm kind of kind of glad she's not around to deal with all, <laughs> all the foolishness with that. But, you know, I do miss her a lot. And, you know, I just like my only regret, you know, is that, you know, she's missing out on so much, you know, so she's never going to see, like, she never saw me walk across stage for graduation or my sister uh, walk across stage to graduate or see us go off to prom or see me perform at Soundstage or right. at Howard University Homecoming um, or anything else that I do. So it's like, damn, you know, and at that time I was like a real quiet kid, you know what I'm saying? So, and also like bullied for like most of middle school and half of high school so you know she tried to get me out of my shell and it was like times I, I just kind of like held a lot of stuff in because I didn't feel comfortable talking about things but it's weird right it's like that's your mom that's your parent that you know your parents they're your best friend they you should be able to talk to your parents right but for some reason I don't know I just felt like I don't know she just wouldn't get me but truth is like she, it's hard she, to explain what it, that is, is it is man you know it, it's hard sometimes you know but you know, and I wish, you know, now knowing now as an adult and I'm older now, like, I wish I had said something. I wish I did talk to her. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, but that's why I did the song, just to kind of get that off my chest. And, you know, this it's like therapy for me. It's like music sometimes is therapy for me. So I just felt Definitely. like I had that weighing on me for a long time. So I just had to just do something special for her, you know, and I feel like other people could relate and wish they did because when it dropped – you know, like pe like the outpour, the overwhelming, you know, positive response I got from it, you know, it was just it was just incredible, you know. And I wasn't even trying to drop that. Like my management team, they heard it and they wanted to drop it right away. I was like, Look, I'm I'm trying to hold on to this for right. the album. You know, <laughs> like I wanna drop this now. Y'all want this to be the first one to to kick off, you know, the year and stuff, you know? Because we dropped this like January of last year, twenty twenty two. Um, then we dropped the video like um, later that year on Mother's Day weekend. So, you know, it, it was like a perfect storm, you know. Gotcha. Dropped the drop single, then dropped the video Mother's Day and stuff. So it, it worked out the way it worked out. But um, I would have rather just held on to that. That's just me. But seeing how things played out, I'm kind of glad we did put it out because, you know, it let people it let people in to see who I am and kind of let people in and get to know me a little bit more and see a different side. You know, so at the end of the day, you know, I'm glad it worked out the way it did. So I got you. What advice and lessons would you say that she's taught you that has been vital to you as an artist or just as, you know, a person? Um, 
you know, just be yourself, you know what I'm saying, and don't take any shit from anybody, you know what I'm saying? So, like like I said, I was bullied, like, most of middle school and high school. If you're comfortable with talking about it, like, what did kids, like, fuck with you for? I mean, well, I kind of was a late bloomer, you know, I was like, I was, like, real skinny and small for a long time. I got so, you. You know, so that would be the usual thing. But I had a smart mouth back then, too, so a lot of times I would snap back, so that would kind of, my mouth would get me in more trouble than, you know, them fucking with me, but, you know, uh, so a little bit of that, too. But, you know, it's just, like, don't take any shit from anybody. Just stand up for yourself and, you know, and just do what your mind, set your mind what you want to do, you know what I'm saying? You can do anything you set your mind to, you know what I'm saying, whatever it is. And she would just support me no matter what. So, yeah, that kind of goes into this question. Do you think that like stars or you know anybody that is like talented musically, anything like that, anyone that wants to be successful, you think that they need an environment that is supportive or having like artistic parents to become one? You don't necessarily need artistic parents, but like, would you say that having people around you that are supportive in general, you think that's like kind of a key to success in a way? Yes and no. Um, and I'm going to say that just because um, I, was, I was watching uh, this one girl, I forgot her name. Oh, uh, it's the artist named Bia. Is that her name? You ever heard of her? Perhaps. B- B-I-A. She said, I was watching like a sound bite one of her interviews. She said, like nobody is required to support you, you know what I'm saying? So you have right. to you have to make them support you. You know, <clears throat> especially if you like a brand new artist, you know, you come out the gate um and nobody knows who you are. So it's it's kind of hard when you starting out, you know, Definitely. So you, you try and get people on board, you know, to fuck with your music and stuff and nobody's trying to listen. It's like, man, nobody supports me. You know, you got to make them believe. You got like I said earlier, you got to believe in you, you know what I'm saying? You got to put some feeling in what you say. And, you know what I'm saying, music is like a feeling, so you got to feel what you say, otherwise nobody's going to believe you, you know. So, I would say, yes, you do need that support, at least from a few people. Like, if you don't get no support from your family, it's like, well, that's jacked up. But sometimes, not having support can push you even more. It all depends on the type of person you are, you know what I'm saying? Like, you either going to, well, if you don't get any support from anybody, you either going to just go in the corner and just give up. You know what I'm saying? Go do something else, or it's gonna push you to hustle and grind even more. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because <clears throat> the best revenge is success. You know what I'm saying? There's no greater feeling than proving people wrong. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've had people say that I'm never gonna be uh, successful in the music business. I've had people say, "Oh, I'm not that good," or "I don't believe um, I'm better than the best," or "Right." I probably just think I'm just better than the worst. You know, which is crazy. You know, because why, why wouldn't you think that, you know, why, every artist that, that grabs a mic, that goes in the booth, you, you got to have that mindset that you are the best. Right. You know, even if you don't, even if you're not there yet, but you're on your way there. Yeah. You still got to have that mindset. It's like Muhammad Ali, like he's, he knew he was the greatest before he said he was. You know what I'm saying? And in my songs, I say I'm the illest a lot. And I know it may sound catchy as like, you know, it's like a tagline or maybe for branding purposes, which it is. But at the same time, it's a mindset. You know what I'm saying? Like Muhammad Ali, like like even Kobe Bryant with the Mamba mentality. You know yeah, what I'm saying? It's like yeah. it's like a mode, it's like a zone you go into, it's a mentality. So and it's just a way for me just to attack a beat or a song just and just go at it. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta go after it. So I would say, you know, wh- whatever it is. So whether I have support from everybody or nobody, you know, I'm just gonna go hard. You know what I'm saying? Nothing and nothing is gonna stop me and get in my way from doing what I need to do. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, um, if nobody has your back, you got your back. You know Definitely. What I'm like it's your responsibility to pay your bills and your car note and stuff like that. Make sure you go to work and you know, make sure you have a roof over your head. You know, nobody's gonna do that for you. And yeah. nobody's gonna just like for me, nobody's gonna force me to go to the studio. I have to do that. I have to put in that work and you know, I have to make sure I, I market myself and spend money to do photo shoots and video shoots, all right. that stuff. You know, I'm the one that's putting all that up. You know, and eventually, you know, I'll get all that back. You know what I'm saying? But like like I said, right now it's just all an investment. Yeah, I don't so. think that there's a cost to like actually living out your true passion. I have lost count of the amount of money I've put into this podcast, but you know, I I know like what figure it's in, but like yeah, you know. I ain't keeping track. I'm not writing this shit down because, like, if I really want to do it for a living, what does it matter? You know what I mean? 
as long as you invest it the right way. Right. You know, because all of this stuff, you know, all this equipment, I can use it even when I move to another location. You know what I mean? I think a lot of people get twisted up, like, with their time and with their money at my age, which, you know, I don't want to say that, like, going around, like, to college and stuff like that is, like, bad or anything, but I think a lot of people, like, really miss out on their passion when it matters, which is now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, the only time you waste money is if you don't follow through. You know right. And so, like, and especially if, you know, if you got a passion um, and you get so far and, you know, and you get so close and then it's like, oh, uh, you know what I'm saying? You hit a, you know, like a roadblock or something. It's like, nah, I don't want to do this. I'm like, but you're so close though. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. when you truly waste time. You know what I'm saying? Like, because pe- people have told me too, like, I, I just told you, like, people have told me, like, I'll never be successful this and that. Um, well, and I've even had people say, well, what if you don't make it? Well, what if I do? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I know what, because I've, I've quit jobs before, you know, so I could have more time to focus on, on this, you know, and, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know what it's like to quit a job. Like, what happens if I keep going with something that I actually want to do, though? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, this, this is what I want to do, so. Yeah, it's very, that's another hard thing, is like, when you have a job, like I got a pretty decent job right now. It's got it gives me benefits. It gives me pretty good pay. It's sometimes it's pretty tasking. Other times I stand around and do nothing. So it's like I'm I'm all right where I'm at. However, I don't want to be there forever. Right. So it's like at what point do I consider this successful enough to leave that comfortable position? You know what I mean? And that's that's another thing is so many people get stuck at a you know at a warehouse or wherever because like they get comfortable because whatever they do they they decide that whatever they're doing currently like you know they could be in a band that just plays local bars and stuff like that and then all of a sudden they're like man my job's paying me more and I'm all tired from my job and I can't you know I don't feel like doing this anymore and then they stop and then now they're stuck miserable still you know they're just as miserable yeah you know because like honestly you gotta you gotta get comfortable with being uncomfortable like you know you gotta be like you almost gotta love working so hard that you're tired yeah you do have to learn how to balance you gotta take breaks you gotta take days off but like you gotta love working hard you know yeah like it's easy to you know be fresh as a daisy you know just be at it but can, can you still work why are you tired? You know what I'm saying? Off of three hours, maybe two hours of sleep. You know what I'm saying? Maybe yep. no maybe no sleep some days, you know. So that that's the real test right there. You know, I've definitely been down that road too. And, you know, I've had jobs like that, you know, where you just either doing nothing or they got you doing too much. Uh-huh. You know, it's like, well, I know I'm not gonna be here forever. So I'm like, something need to shake. You know what I'm saying? I need something with this music to shake soon, you know. Right, right. So yeah, it's funny, like, new people at my job, they like, they're like, man, I need something to do, you know, it's so boring, I'm like, I'm like, bruh, I'm cool, I'm chilling, they're paying me, you know what yeah. I mean, I ain't I'm, trying to... You know, there's nothing wrong with a nine to five, there's nothing no. wrong with working, you know what I'm saying, hey, you get money at the end of the day, but I know not all work is good work, but you get money, you're able to, to provide for yourself and your family, so I mean, that's all that matters at the end of the day, Yeah. Um, but always... Unless you're comfortable, unless you're content with that, always look to elevate, you know what I'm saying? Even, yeah. if, you, even if you think, you, okay, you might want to retire here, like look to elevate, you know what I'm saying? Like, look for, you know, see if they got that management position open or, right. you know, you know, always elevate. That way you can get more money and then you got more time to relax and do what you need to do. I mean, I know sometimes you go to, like, higher levels of management or something like that, they want you to work more, but, yeah. I mean, every job is different, you know what I'm saying? It may not always be like that. Um but yeah, always look to elevate, you know what I'm saying? Never be content. That's why, you know, this music, it's like, I'm not trying to just be uh, just a SoundCloud rapper or just be performing locally. I mean, that's great, uh, you know what I'm saying? I would, you know, what I want to do is lock down, you know, the DMV, lock down Merlin, you know, from Baltimore to D.C. I want to have that on lock, but I also want to expand, you know what I'm saying? Um, that's why, you know, like, this last June I did a show, in Miami. Okay. You know, and that was my third time in Miami. And every time I've been to Miami, I've been there three times. And every time I've been there, I performed. Okay. You know I was so, just getting ready to ask that. Okay. Yeah. So it's like, 
Uh, so yeah, it's like every time I go down there, I'm always performing. But yeah, what, what were you about to say? No, I was gonna like I was just getting ready to ask, have you performed each time there? So definitely like go into your whole experiences out there. Did you know anybody out there? Or did you just go out there because it's Miami? Well, the first well the first time no, um, it was just the first time I went. I performed at this spot called Miami Live in North Beach. Um, so I mean I didn't know anybody down there. It was just like a showcase. I signed up for online. You know, I had and I had to get people to vote for me, so Okay. And this is where the support comes in. You know, this is just for me just grinding, you know, for like a few years at this point. This is like a few years ago. But just grinding, just being consistent and you know, and thankfully, you know, I had people, family, friends, you know, and other people who I probably didn't know that were strangers, you know, support me and vote for me and I had the opportunity to go down there and perform, you know. So yeah, I just went down there, did my thing, and connected with a few other artists. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, shout out my man Charlie, uh, CAT, down there. Um, met him. You know, it was just cool. You know, just got a chance to go down there, perform Miami. You know what I'm saying? Like, most people, they just come down here to visit. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm down Get here. Get drunk on, and shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm here on music business. You know, there's not a whole lot of people around my way that can say that. You know, now that. The last two times I've been down there is um, because of my management team, because they're based down there. Okay. Um, shout out to Muye Gang. Shout out to CA, CEO and uh, my assistant, Rain. Um, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So they be handling a lot of stuff for me behind the scenes. So it kind of takes – it's different having management because they take a lot of the weight off your shoulders a little bit. I mean, I still do a lot on my own, but it's nice to have, like, other people to kind of handle shit for you. You know At what I'm saying? At what point did you get, like, official management? I was like – about to say two years ago coming okay. up um yeah so two years ago next month it will be um so yeah like it's crazy because like i said i've been doing this on my own for so long and you know finally you know just have management it's like you know for a while i was kind of skeptical because it's like a lot of people is like real shady out here yeah you know, yeah or they might want to have you go in a different direction or something like that to appeal to the masses uh-huh like, we saw about the trendy shit earlier yeah um but yeah, it's like, but they've been so cool and so patient and, you know, just let me do my thing. And like I said, they the ones that wanted to drop For Lynn, you know, as the first single, you know, while I was under their clientele, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, really? Y'all want to go with that one? <laughs> you know, so I was like, right. hey, but, you yeah. know, it, it, wor- it worked out, you know what I'm saying? So in to be honest, I wasn't sure if I wanted to even perform that, but, you know, I had my dad there, you know, my family was there, so I was like, I got to do it. And we had Baltimore Soundstage, my first time performing at Soundstage, so, nice. you know, I, I got I got to do it, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, that, that was real cool, real special, so. Did it get a good, like, crowd reaction and whatnot? Uh, yeah, uh, well, I didn't perform it down in Miami, so I, I I don't really perform it live that much. I think Soundstage might have been the first time I performed it live. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just because... It's, it's like a really emotional song, and you know it kind of hits hard for me. So I don't re- I only perform that like special occasions, you know. I got if, you. If I need to, but in Miami, you know what I'm saying? Like you in Miami, and you know this is one thing I learned too uh, when you're performing. Um, when you're doing open mics or showcases, like well, spe- well, we'll start with open mics. When you're doing open mics, don't invite a big crowd. You know what I'm saying? That's just where you go to tune up. On, on your performance and see how what works and what doesn't work you know what i'm saying you can invite a couple friends just to right. see just to get like a few opinions and stuff but like you don't have to invite everybody you don't have to invite the whole hood yeah you yeah. know the whole you, you know your whole tribe or whatnot just just bring like a few friends see get get their opinions on stuff and see what the crowd think see what works see what doesn't work you know what i'm saying the showcases they're a little different too but you know it's mostly just other artists there be, you know, at open mics and showcases. It's just mainly open uh, other artists. So, but when you're doing showcases, I mean, for the most part, I pay attention and I just observe what everybody else is doing. You know, like I have my own set and all that stuff planned out, but I really just, I really like to just pay attention and see what everybody else is doing. So it's like, okay, a lot of people, they got like a certain style or certain tempo they like to do. And it's like, it's a party. You know, you at a club, wherever you at, so you got to turn it. You can't do, like, your your conscious or intimate type tracks. Yeah, You know, yeah. a lot of these functions and stuff, you know, like you can't do, a like, a slow joint for the ladies and stuff, and there's a bunch of dudes and stuff, man. You know, you can't you can't do no um, uplifting conscious type shit. You know, like, people come there, they come in to get drunk and stuff like that. Right. They come to the party. You know, you got to have something turned up, you know. So that's why I had, like, a good mixture of stuff in my set you probably saw. So, 
um, like if, unless you're doing like your own show, you headlining, and everybody's coming to see you, then you can like drop your whole catalog on. Then you can yeah. do the mixture of, you know, you got to turn up songs, then you got your personal songs too, um, so you, you can blend it all together. But when people don't know you, you know, you gotta make a first impression because a lot of those people they just getting to know you, they getting to see you perform for the first time. So you gotta really make a big, you know, good first impression. You know, so so from when I'm doing those type of shows and stuff like that, I just come out with the heat. You know what I'm saying? So for for Lynn, that stays in the tuck. You know, for them type of joints, unless it's like you know a special occasion. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha, man. Um, but yeah, that, that's about it. But you know, like I said, my management team, they the ones. The last two times I went to Miami, they got me down there. Um, and the first the first time I went, well, the second time I was down there um, for the first showcase, I went. They got me on. I was performing, and Rico Love was in the building. He was there. Uh, London on the track, he was oh, there. Oh, shit, okay. You know, um, you know, I'm not trying to, like, flex or nothing like that. but I'm Oh, just, that's cool, man. You know, like, they was really there, and I, I still got the footage, too, when they was there. Like, they were speaking on the panel and stuff like that, mm -hmm. just giving, like, all the artists and stuff like that, um, just advice and, you know, tips on the industry and, you know, what works that's and what cool. doesn't work. You know what I'm saying? Um, who else was the hit maker? Uh who formerly known as Youngberg, you know. Okay. Uh, a few other people. Uh, cool from Cool and Dre was there. Uh, so, yeah, it was, it was cool, you know, be able to see them, hear them speak, you know, get to know their experiences and stuff like that, what they had to deal with. Um, so, yeah, that was a cool experience. Got to do that. And then this past June, that was the last time I was down there. Um, and my manager, this was his showcase that he put together. So he had all his artists and a few other artists that signed up and stuff that came on board too, so I did that, and yeah, they like when I got off stage, like everybody was coming at me. I was like, "Yo, man, you like, killed it!" You know what I'm saying? Like, I had people ask me for like, social media. I was like, "This shit was crazy." Like, hey, women come up to me too. I was like, "Yo, yo, this is crazy," you know? Yeah. Um, um just like recently, I was at the auto bar. I had two people come up to me that I had never spoken to before, and mm -hmm. they were like, "Yo." You know, Harbor Discussions guy. <laughs> and it is a crazy feeling. Yeah. It's like also the best feeling in the world, pretty much. But that, that's what I was talking about earlier. You got to make a good first impression. And also consistency, too. Like, so, like, people, they probably seen your face somewhere. They might have seen one of your interviews. And, yeah. You know, that's, and or, or word of mouth spread. So that's how they recognize you. You know what I'm saying? And Definitely. With me going down to Miami and doing other shows, it's like, you know, as soon as I get off stage, it's like, yeah, before I go on, like, a lot of people don't know who I am. they like, who's Tim Lewis? Who's this guy? When I get off the stage, like, the energy changes. It's like, oh, oh this dude, like, oh, he ain't messing around. Like, right. okay, like I got to get this, I got to get this new Instagram or something, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, so um, it, it's definitely a good feeling to uh, feel that appreciation and love and admiration, you know, for your hard work and stuff. Definitely. And I like what you said about consistency. This ties into something that I kind of forgot. It was mm -hmm. like, I do that all the time where I'm like, <laughs> my guest will like, be, we'll, we'll be talking about something and my head will be like, ooh, yeah, bring this up. This got something. And then I forget mm -hmm. right as I'm about to say it. It's all good. But uh, we were talking about, um, you know, gaining supporters and stuff like that. And also how, you know, nothing's free. Like, you know, you got to spend money to make money. And like one of the ways that you can spend money to make money is like, if you're trying to be a part of a certain music scene, like go to shows, that's one way. Consistently go to shows too. You know, even if you're not there on business, like go because, you know, it's like you said, people will see you and then they'll remember you. And it's like supporting is also like buying merch. You know what I mean? Because that supports the bands. And then you're also like, that's, that's a way to also represent them. And getting your own merch made is another investment too because it's branding and stuff like that but also when people keep seeing you someone that originally wouldn't work with you will work with you after seeing you enough you know i i have friends and you know some of my family members and stuff like that i'll be talking about like yeah i talked to this band and they said you know not right now and they're like oh what do they think they're all big and whatnot i'm like well no i'm like they probably just a don't do media or like they don't want to, you know what I mean? It's like, they don't know me. Like, that's the thing. Like, I can't get all upset because, like, some, some band in Baltimore doesn't want to do something with a county kid that they have no clue who they are. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you got it. That's why you got to be consistent. That's why you got to keep showing out to the shows. You got to keep, you know, supporting other people that you want support from. Absolutely. You know, like, it It took me a long time to get that soundstage show, you know, like, um, 
my boy Donnie Breeze. Shout out to Donnie Breeze. Yeah. Um, you know, he he did a lot of shows with Wisdom Court as well. Um Shout out to Billy Live too. You know, what I'm yeah. he he got me on. We'll, uh, we'll we'll be talking about both of those people in in detail. Uh, okay. As well. Yeah, uh, they they were both my boys. You know, what I'm saying I, I know Donnie since high school, and you know, I met. You probably heard me tell a story about how I met Billy at the last two shows. Um, so for, for those that don't know, um, I met Billy Live um, at Baltimore Soundstage, maybe around what was it, 2016 or 2017? I know it was at the Raekwon show. I know Raekwon was performing and. Him and Donnie, were, they were both opening. So I met Billy on the elevator coming from the parking garage. And, you know what I'm saying, we just s- spoke, said hello. He's like, who are you here to see? I was like, oh, I'm here to support my man Donnie. He helped Ray Quine. He's like, oh, yeah, me too. You know, so he gave me his card. You know what I'm saying, got talking and stuff like that. And, you know, the re- rest is history. Um, so, yeah, like for years, you know, I was coming just to see him, uh, Donnie, also, Jay Money. Shout out to Jay Money Hackett. Hell yeah. Um, for years, just come and support them guys performing at Soundstage, tearing it up, you know, tearing the house down, and opening for all these legends like Ja Rule and Bone Ducks Harmony, Raekwon, um, and so on. You know, I'm just like, I'm just like, one day, I'm just like, that's going to be me on this stage. You know what I'm saying? That's going to be me. You know, so I just, but for right now, I'm just going to clap for them. You know, I'm just going to, come in here and support, you know what I'm saying? I know one day there's going to be an opportunity. So last year, um, I was at Wisdom Court Summer Jam also performing, and uh, they had Mike Jones there. So, yeah. So, yeah, it was my first time performing or opening for a big artist, you know what I'm saying? And I know Mike Jones, he's not, like, at the level where he was, like, in 2005, but still, like, it's Mike Jones. You know oh, yeah. It's, it's Mike Jones, you know what I'm saying? So uh, it was cool. You know, I got to meet him, got to dap him up. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't get a picture. My my phone was dying. Ah. You know, but it, it was cool. Got to see him perform. He performed all the joints, you know, from back in his heyday and stuff. So it was cool, man. You know, yeah. You know, he was real cool, real humble, you know, taking pictures with people, dabbing people up. I think that the memory, though, is almost better than the picture. You know what yeah. I mean? Because, like, especially also because, like, that'll probably, I think, stuff like that can improve relationships with the bigger artists and stuff because they're always taking pictures and stuff like that. So sometimes it's, like, Almost a breath of fresh air, like, oh, this dude didn't want to, you know, he's, you know, he's the one guy that didn't ask me for a picture, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like getting to talk to him and everything like that, that's that's what matters and everything like yeah. that, you know. Yeah, and, I mean, I mean, I, I just dapped him up, you know. what I'm saying he was real cool, so I, I don't know, he he might not remember me or nothing like that, but if he sees this, <laughs> hey, shout out to Mike Jones, man, appreciate you. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was cool, man, just open up for my first big artist and stuff like that. And once again, had my family in the building for that too, so it was cool, man. Just just to do that, and uh, we had that um, at the Howard County Fairgrounds um, in West Friendship. Uh, so yeah, it was a cool experience. A lot of dope artists came out. Donnie, you know, Jay Money, and even Billy was even performing that night. So it was good. It was a good night. And then you know, fast forward to uh, this last month at Soundstage. You know, finally, you know, got got an opportunity. And I, I said, man, say less, you know what I'm saying? Just let me know what the date is, you know? Um, so, yeah. And then not even, not long after that, then Billy hit me up about doing Auto Bar, you know, and that's how I got on with that, you know what I'm saying? And I performed at Auto Bar before, and uh, Comp was there. Um, okay. I, don't know, I don't know a lot of people really know who that is, but, you know, he's, he's real well-known in the Baltimore area. Um, I think most people might remember him from being in the Def Jam Fight for New York video game. Okay. <laughs> so, I... Yeah, so if you don't know who Comp is, go, you know, hook up your old Xbox, you know what I'm saying, uh, and put put in that Def Jam Fight from New York. You'll, you'll see who I'm talking about. C-O-M-P. That's some OG shit right there. Yeah, man. That's, I'm like, a lot of people don't really know or remember him. I was like, but he was cool, too. You know what I'm saying? I got, got to meet him, dap him up real quick, you know what I'm saying, see him perform. You know, I was like, oh, so I like Kyle. Because even I had to, like, get a reminder. I was like, Kyle, I was like, I know that name. I was like, yeah. I was like oh, I was like, oh, he was. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, yeah, so that was cool, too. So I actually got to open for two artists. Um, so, yeah, that, that was cool, man. And uh, it wouldn't be possible without Billy, Billy Live, you know, giving me that opportunity. So um, shout out to him once again. Does a lot for this community. Yeah, he does a lot for the community, for upcoming artists, you know what I'm saying? So and he, he knows because he, he was at that point, too, you know, in his career. So, you know, he, he definitely not ashamed of, and definitely not afraid of giving back, you know, so I definitely appreciate him. I know he got, like, another show coming up um, in a few days, maybe a week or so. Yeah, I want to say it's Tuesday. Yeah, he hit me up about it, but I had stuff going on, so I couldn't make it. But I ho- hope 
y'all kill it. Hope y'all do y'all thing. And uh, definitely try to get on the next one for sure. You know. Yeah, I might have to pop out to that one. I, I saw it. It's on it's on a work night, and I do go to shows on work nights. Mm. So it's always like a thing, like, ah, uh, do I go? But, you know, in July, I started going out to shows, and it's been nothing but beneficial to me to get out into the public. Like, I you know. I'm a person like a lot of people. They have pro- they have trouble like going up and speaking to people they don't know. So my first show that I went to, not at the auto bar, like not my first show there, but you know, my first show in back in July when I started really going was NASCAR Allo. I don't know if you know who that is. He's like uh I don't even know how to describe him. He's like rap mixed with some, you know, punk and metal kind of influence. Okay. Uh, but I went and saw him. I didn't go with anybody. Went and sat by myself. And, like, one of the opening artists went around to, like, give his social media out and stuff like that. And I and I made sure to switch to, like, my Harbor Discussions page so that I could, like, reach out after the show and, like, you know, be like, hey, I saw you at the auto bar one night. He's like, oh, shit, I see you got multiple accounts. What do you do? And I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, I do interviews and stuff like that. I was like, I'll interview you at some point. And we've talked a little bit and stuff like that Uh He's out in North Jersey. Uh, his artist name is like NXS, and it's a couple numbers. You know what? I'll uh, pull it up so I can shout him out. But okay. it is a perfect example of even if you're the person who is not comfortable going out and speaking to people, just go out in a public setting, and there's people that will come up and speak to you. Oh, yeah. Um, closed mouths don't get fed, you know. Mm. And I, I learned a long time ago, um, my old co-worker said, look, man, just, just go outside and just... Just, just go out. Just go meet people. Talk to people. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, you, you don't know um, who knows who and who knows what. You know what I'm saying? So you, you never know. It's, it's always an opportunity out there. You just got to go outside and just network. You Definitely. know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you probably heard the saying, like, your network is your net worth. Yeah. You know, so, um, and just me, like I said earlier, you know, I was a shy, quiet kid. You know, now it's like, as an adult, now I got to, like, force myself to kind of speak up and stuff. Yeah. You know, I'm still kind of quiet here and there, like if I don't know you, you know what I'm saying. But unless it's like unless I know you, or if it's about business, you know what I'm saying, doing stuff like this. Ironically, I'm like real comfortable, and you know I'm talkative. But any 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 other time is like I'm just quiet. I'm just like, yeah, you know. But uh, when it comes down to business or something like that, or family or anybody I know, it's like you know I'm an open book. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. And it's it, this goes back to consistency and just keep showing up. If you are trying to talk to certain people. Get in the same room as them. Yeah. Because, perfect example, one of the biggest Baltimore hardcore bands is called Trapped Under Ice. Okay. And the uh, vocalist is named Justice. Now, he's big figure in the hardcore scene. He's, he's in several bands and helps with a lot of other bands, you know, putting stuff on and everything like that. So he does also, like, alternative indie stuff. That's the vinyl record right there on the right. Oh, so okay. he does alternative indie as well, and it they did a record release at the upstairs bar, at the auto bar. So I was like, this is pretty cool, you know what I mean? I'm into him and his music, so I'm going to go, right? And if I get to talk to him, I get to talk to him. If not, I don't. Now, when I'm at shows and stuff like that, and I want to talk to a band, I wait until I think it's the right moment. I'm not going to interrupt someone while they're talking to other people. I'm not going to you know, go out of my way to like, you know, be like, hey, 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 hey." like, you know, I think you just got to make it authentic and genuine. So I wore my boots because it was a semi-formal event. So I wore these nice boots that I have and he walked by, said something about my boots. I'm like, all right, here we go now. You know what I mean? And he has a big following on Instagram and everything like that. So I've messaged and emailed, but when you're at that level trying to hit up, you know, It'd be like trying to hit up some big rapper. It's like the chances of them actually seeing your message is super low. It's not because they don't want to see it. It's because they have thousands of messages in their spam. You yeah. know what I mean? That's that's one thing I don't like about Instagram is, you know, if they're not following you, it goes right to the requests, I think, now. Yeah, well, and that's even still kind of fairly new because, remember, yeah. um, that didn't always exist. Oh. Uh, you could just you could DM anybody and, you know, they would see it or get it right away. And I don't know if they choose to respond or not, but either way, they get it, though. They see yeah. it. Now it's like you send them a message, it just goes right to their DM requests. And nine times out of ten, you're not going to check that. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? I barely check mine, you know what I'm saying? But... 
I guess it depends on the following too. They got like a million followers. It's like right. You got like a thousand of them DMing you every day. You know, it's like you're not gonna check all those messages and stuff like that. Yeah, so. the guy I was talking about has twenty eight point five thousand followers. Yeah, so yeah. the chance, you know, I'm not. So I'm not mad at that. So I'm like, what am I gonna do instead of bitching that he's not getting my messages? Go, go, go to his show. You know what I mean? And you might get to talk to him. And if not, it's like you still went to a show. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's all about going out and supporting. And it's like you can't expect to get support without giving support as well. Even if that's just like going out and talking to your fans. Like if you're at a show and you're only playing to 10 people, like go talk to those 10 people instead of being like, man, this show is dead. Like go make those your diehard followers. And then they'll bring more of their people. Like, hey, this guy was super cool. He came out and talked to us and everything like that. Yeah, I mean, look. Like I said, I was telling you earlier, you got to start somewhere. So you can't expect to perform in front of 10,000 if you never perform in front of 10 people, you know? Yeah. And ironically, that's kind of how I started. Like my first ever live performance at this open mic in Randallstown um, called the Simone Center. This little hole in the wall spot. Um, that, was, that was a crazy day, too, because my car broke down. Shit. You know? Um, and I, my dad, he was coming. Good thing my dad was coming because I, I just hitched the ride with him, you know. And a couple of my boys was coming too, so I, you know, he just picked them up along the way and stuff like that. So, but you know, fortunately, I was able. To, we were still able to get there, you know. And I was nervous because was my first time performing live, you know. And this is like kind of when I first started as well. Like I probably had been rapping maybe like over a year at this point. Okay. So I performed, and you know, it was just like I had a lot going on at that time too. Um, so, but I just, it just gave me an opportunity just to like let out all that frustration and just, you know, just, let's let it all out. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, music is, it's therapy for me. So sometimes you just, it, it, it just comes over you. Like the emotion just takes over, you know? Um, so yeah, and people could definitely feel it, you know, like, and that was back when I first started. So if I, I don't know if I still have the footage, but I, I can definitely tell it was like raw, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like now you see me perform, it's like a little smoothed out. You know what I'm saying? I know how to, you know, use the whole stage and, you know, I'm able to like just to talk to everybody, you know what I'm saying? And, you know what I'm saying? Just, just use the whole stage, you know what I'm saying? Um, you think that's a problem is like a rapper who's just standing like right in the middle and doesn't oh, move at all? I'm, I'm going to tell you right, stage presence is important. I'm, I'm telling you, that's why if you see me perform, I use the whole stage and walking back and forth. Unless it's like we in a smaller setting or something like that and it's like a small stage and I can't really walk around. But right. other than that... You know what I'm saying? Like, especially if you got like a hype song, you got to jump around. Yeah. Like, you got you got to bounce a little bit. You got to move around. So, you know, you got like a crowd of people. You know what I'm saying? Like, and all the bar, you was there. Like, it was packed. Oh yeah. Especially when I was there. Like, I like when I went on. Like, people still kind of coming in, and but I went backstage, and I didn't see everybody else coming. And I came out and said like, oh shit, there's a lot of people yeah. out here. I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. So I definitely, we definitely can't fuck this up. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, it, it it was crazy, man. Um, but you definitely have, gotta have stage presence because, like I said, it goes back to that feeling. You know what I'm saying? You gotta feel what you say. You gotta believe what you say. Otherwise, people not gonna believe in you. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you just got you just gotta own that. You got you gotta believe like you the greatest, you the, the illest. You know, as I as I say. Um, so yeah, man, and people they feel that and they and they resonate with that and. And you was there, like they was they was feeling it, you know. Especially when I did, you know, a mixture of, like my own stuff, and then did a few remixes of some classic joints too. Yeah, you know, so they was they was feeling it. So I'm I'm grateful for that, and made a lot of connections after that, and you know, gained a lot a lot of new followers and everything. So yeah, man. But yeah, stage presence is important for sure. <clears throat> I think that is what makes hardcore punk like what it is, because some of the biggest stage presence that you'll ever have is that because. They're, like, jumping and stomping and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Yeah. Like, a lot of rappers now, are. I think, you know, there is a lot of influence from that. You know, I know, like, I think, I forget which rappers, but, you know, they wear, like, some old school, like, circle jerks. And, like, they've ripped some, like, hardcore designs and stuff like that. And Post Malone, I know, like, even goes to, like, hardcore shows. Yeah, I, I see a lot of that, um, like, rock and roll style, like Travis Scott. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I, went, I, I went to... um. Uh, his show when he had the Astroworld tour, like, that was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it's hard to, like, not bring that up now. You know what I mean? 
Oh, oh, you talk about oh, the controversy and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I well not not that I wasn't there oh. for that, but like when he came to the Capitol One Center in DC, right, right, right. Like, this is like before that. This is like a couple years. Yeah, before. yeah, that's right. This is like uh, twenty eighteen or something. But yeah, like that show was that show was crazy. Um, but yeah, like that was probably the most lit concert I've probably ever been oh, to. Oh, definitely. At least by far, because I'm like the energy he brought. And especially the way the album and stuff, the rollout with the album and everything like that. That album was like fire all the way through. Yeah, you know, it was it was just a moment. You know, so you just had to be. It was like a moment in time. You know, like with the energy. You know, what I'm saying. And I remember like the last song he ended off was Sicko Mode. You know, like Drake wasn't there, but like he let Drake uh, <laughs> part play, and everybody was just reciting the words to that right. to that joint. It was like, man, that that shit was crazy. So. Yeah, and Don, Donnie was there too. He was with me too. So that that was that was crazy, man. But that was that was a good concert, and it gave me more inspiration. Cause I was like, man, this is that's where I want to be. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. You know, one day, you know, you know, selling out arenas and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Performing, you know, doing nationwide, worldwide tours and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's like I remember seeing Jay Money perform at the. Uh, it's like a rec center down the block. Mm-hmm. You know, a few blocks or whatever. And I remember he like literally jumped off the stage, like not in, you know, not like not stage dive, but like you know, he hopped down into the crowd off the stage and whatnot. And that, I that man stayed going into the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I asked him before sounds. I was like, "Man, you going in the crowd?" He's like, "Man, I don't know." <laughs> you know, what I'm saying, "I don't know." <laughs> so this is crazy, right? Have you seen that viral video of that? rapper that like jumped off his like short stage and he fell and broke his leg have you seen that i ain't seen that okay i didn't know because it has gone kind of viral and whatnot it's just crazy because um, what was this uh not too long ago um i'll pull it up sorry m16 anyway um dude his manager like somehow saw my page and reached out to me and i did an interview with the guy he's from uh fontana california okay Um, and it's crazy because, you know, I got a random DM from her explaining this artist from California. I'm like, this seems like a scam. What is this? You know, and it it totally wasn't, but I'm like this, you know, the way that, you know, you get random DMs all the time from bots and stuff like that. And then I start looking into him. I'm like, holy shit. I saw this video of this guy falling off stage, like, you know, maybe like a week earlier or anything. Mm. You might've seen it. Ooh. Yeah. Um. But it, yeah, no, it went viral on like TikTok and wow. shit like that. And he was, you know, he he was a rapper like well before that and everything wow. like that. But um, yeah, we, I know we were talking about hopping into the crowd and stuff like that. And I think that's what made me think of that. But no, Jay Money's got that good stage presence, and that's what kind yeah. of that's what made the whole you know his performance significant to me at the time was him hopping into the crowd it reminded me of you know the punk and metal shows and stuff that we even started like a little push pit and whatnot but yeah, yeah jay he brings a lot of energy you know what i'm saying he definitely he, he knows what works for the crowd he's definitely one of them artists that puts on a good performance he knows what works and you know and what's gonna set the crowd off and stuff like we hear him say do that shit do that. yeah you know what i'm saying yeah. like he, he's definitely all about crowd participation and getting the crowd live you know what i'm saying that's one thing I definitely admire about him, you know what I'm saying? He definitely puts on a good show. Hell yeah. So now we'll talk about Georgetown Freestyle a little bit more. Um, it's about being from... Now, are you from Georgetown, D.C. originally? No, no. Well, I'm originally from Montgomery County, Maryland. Okay. Uh, Gate, uh, Gatesburg, Germantown area. Gotcha. Um, grew up in Germantown. Um, it's pretty much not that far from Gatesburg. So, like, if you heard, like, Logic or Wale? They're yeah, from, yeah, yeah. They're, they're from Gatesburg. Of course. You know what I'm saying? So, Germantown's like... Pretty much the next town over. It's like right there. So yeah, I think you even said on one of your songs, "German Town Raised Me," something like that. Yeah, um, that was on one of the mixtapes or something like that. Uh, the illest summer ever. Um, so I'm glad. I'm glad you you brought that up too. Yeah, yeah. We'll get into the discography a little bit <laughs> soon. Yeah, but uh, uh, strictly talk, but just talking about Georgetown. Um, but yeah, I'm from Montgomery County, Maryland. Originally grew grew up there, born and raised. Um, from Germantown, you know. I went to school at Northwest High School. Okay. Um, Talk ra- about a little bit what that area that you grew up in was like. What your upbringing was like in that area. Um, you know, it, it was cool. It was cool. You know, what I'm saying, like, other than aside from like the bullying and stuff like that, right, but, right. Uh, it was pretty much chills for the most part. Like, uh, just basic, average suburb suburban life. You know, in the county. But like nowadays, like if you go out there now, like it's 
getting kind of ratchet out there, you know. Like, yeah. I just heard uh, the other day it was uh, a shooting at the Top Golf in Germantown. Damn, at a Top Golf. At Top Golf. Shit, you can't so, even so, go to so, Top Golf now. So while why they while they putting, they shooting too. They they that's busting cats. That's crazy. You know, I was like, wow. I don't expect that out of a Top Golf. You know, you that know? that Top Golf is still kind of fairly new. They just built that like, a couple years ago, Got and they you. and they kind of like renovating that area too. But I was like, man, German like yeah, Germantown's getting kind of wild, man. Like. You know, like you rarely hear about stuff. I mean, because it's the county. You know, you think like nothing happens out there, but it's always the places you least expect. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like well, you, you it, think you think oh like shit's gonna pop off in Baltimore or something's gonna pop off in Southeast DC. Like no, it could be in the county. You know yeah, what I'm well, saying? Well, people forget that everything trickles down. A lot of the drug addiction trickles down here. Yeah. Literally, I don't know which way you came, but. If you pass the health center over there, there's a sign with how many people overdose every month. Wow. Swear to God, that don't sit with me right. I but did pass a hospital on the way up here, but I, I didn't see no sign. Yeah, yeah. So it was. it's on the, if you like pass, keep going straight past the hospital. You'll hit it eventually. Um, the sign's facing the other way if you're coming from that way. But either way, it just like goes to show that stuff trickles down. And it's not too violent over here or anything like that. But yeah, it'd be a shooting every now and then. Yeah, man. Cr- crazy things happen everywhere man it's crazy yeah. people everywhere you know shit happens everywhere man it could be in the city it could be in the suburbs yeah you know what i'm saying people from the city come and move into the county yeah and, and some, you know. sometimes that's what it is and they bring that foolishness out with them so um that, but it is what it is you just gotta keep your head and swivel and just move in peace you know what i'm saying don't start and that won't be nothing that's uh-huh. pretty much all it is so it's just just people just being stupid and reckless out there so hopefully they get it together out there in germantown but yeah other than that it's pretty quiet like I said, basic county life and stuff. Yeah, if you mind your business almost anywhere you go, you should be fine. Yeah. I think that the news perpetuates a lot of fear. You know what I mean? Especially yeah, yeah, the in me- the Baltimore the media, area. Yeah, the media, they definitely like to hype stuff up just to build a story and stuff. Just have something to talk about. Yeah. Um, but as far as the inspiration for Georgetown, I don't mean a segue, but you know. Yeah, no, no. It's, that's totally fine. Um, like I know I grew up in Germantown, but Georgetown, I mean... And I wasn't even sure at the time, you know, if I even wanted to call it that. But I remember I was, uh, at the time, I used to be a temp worker and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, for labor finders. So they send you different jobs and stuff like that. So I remember I, I was like a constant on this one job, you know, uh, we was at the warehouse, we was doing the warehouse jobs and we do deliveries and stuff like that. Okay. So we did a delivery around like the Georgetown area, you know, it was like. Kind of like a day like this, sunny, midday, you know what I'm saying? And Georgetown, that's when it's like really lively, like during the day. Gotcha. Like, it can get live at night too, but like a lot of the stores and stuff closed down. I don't know if you've ever been around that area. Not particularly. So it's basically like like a whole strip mall, outdoor strip mall basically. Gotcha. Like think think of like... Um, we got a couple of them here. Yeah, think of like an outlet or something. You might have an yeah. outlet or something, you know what I'm saying, strip mall. It's, See, ba- like, it's basically like that. We have shit like that out here. But it ain't nothing to hang around. It's usually food joints, and then like, who the fuck gonna chill outside of Bed Bath and Beyond? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Georgetown, they got <laughs> they got all that and more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they got yeah. they got restaurants, they got hotels, they got. You know, it's about the water too, so they got like a little waterfront okay. and stuff. Um, they got like a little boat or something you can go on, take a ride on. Um, but yeah, you know, they got a movie theater down there too, AMC, and uh, also Georgetown University's out there. Um, so yeah, and also I believe they shot. A scene from The Exorcist out there too. No shit. Okay. Yeah. So it's like I don't know. Have you ever seen The Exorcist? Oh like, yeah, yeah. That movie's so. crazy. That it, honestly, like when I saw like the OG Exorcist for the first time, it was one of the only horror movies to like give me a feeling in my stomach, like you know, to actually kind of not sit with me well. Yeah. Most horror movies I go like, eh, that's just a movie. Exorcist, I'm like, yo, that shit wasn't right, yo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, I've heard about. That's still on my list. I mean, I know about. You know the one particular scene with the girl acting up and stuff, but I know they did <laughs> shoot a scene like by the stairs. Cause I keep hearing I would, people. I keep hearing people bring up the stairs and stuff. I just like looked that. it up. Yeah, the Exorcist steps are in Georgetown, yeah. so that I'm, I think it was like the priest basically got hypnotized or whatever, or and yeah, fucking pushed him right down the steps, oh, okay. and he fucking like kill, got killed, I believe. Damn. Okay. Yeah, I, I gotta check that out. But um, yeah, that yeah. So I mean, that's. That's one of the reasons what it's known for, and also you know Georgetown University and stuff. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, it was me and the coworker. We in the truck, we making delivery in the area, and like I said, it was midday, nice and sunny out. I think it might have been the summertime. 
Um, you know, everybody's just popping out, you know, ladies looking good and stuff, you know, and I don't, for some reason, that was like, like over a decade ago. You right. know, I just had this in my head and I was like, riding around Georgetown, da, 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 you know what I'm saying? So uh, I just thought about it. I ain't write it down, nothing, you know, it's like I just went in there and just went in and I had the beat for like a, a while, like years actually, you know what I'm saying? I just sat on it. Who made that beat? Uh, L. David. Okay. And he's actually a producer from Mexico. Nice. Yeah, so I actually got the chance to go on live with him a few months ago and talk to him. And, you know, we kind of just broke down How the beat How would you describe that beat? Is it, like, soulful, would you say? Yeah, well, you know, it's got, like, that. Uh, it's got definitely got that nostalgia vibe to it. So it's got that going for it, the Mary J. Blige joint in there. Yeah. Um, you know, also it's something for the ladies, too. And it's also something that represents the DMV area. You know, that's, just, that's something that's important to me, too. I feel like... You know, like every region, every city, they got their own little anthems and stuff. They got, you know, songs that represent them. Like New York, they got their anthems. Yeah. L.A., Chicago, Atlanta, uh, Houston, Miami. Like everybody got, got their stuff you know, that represents their region. I feel like the DMV, like we got a few things. We got a few songs. Like Wale, yeah. you know, he did Pretty Girls and stuff. And yeah. you know, he, he's putting on for us. He's done a good job with that. Uh, you know, we got Logic, too. And a few others, you know, like Fat Trail. Um and of course, in the Baltimore side, you know King Los. Yeah, Young uh, Moose. K- Moose, uh, Comp. You know what I'm saying? So, but I feel like we're not really getting as much recognition or, no, you know, much coverage as like the other cities, or other regions. So that, just, that is exactly what I why I started this here because like back in high school, I came across No Jumper. I started watching No Jumper videos. You familiar with No Jumper? Not really. Adam Twenty Two does interviews with like rappers oh, well, and well, stuff well, like that. Well, I know who Adam Twenty Two is because <laughs> of this other <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah, because no, not, not because not because he let show. his wife know. That's not <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's uh, that's a whole another convo. But we no, might um, rate on so this. he started off years and years ago. He started a BMX blog. Okay, and that turned into him opening a BMX store, and he started like interviewing SoundCloud rappers out his BMX store. Okay, so I I got started from his content like that. And then also like Vlad TV, mm. you know, Breakfast Club. Mm. I watch all this shit and I'm like, you know, we don't got this for the DMV. I don't, you know, there's probably some uh, DMV YouTube channels, but as far as I know, there's no big media platforms specifically for the DMV. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, you got radio, but nobody really listens to the radio and stuff. Right. Like, like everything is streaming now. It's po- podcast pretty much taken over the game. I mean, for, but for a long time, I would say like, like Donnie Simpson – you know, he would be like the voice of like DC because you know he for a long time he was like a radio host for like WPGC ninety five point five. Okay. You know, for a long time uh, he even made an appearance like on on Martin. Um, gotcha. When they did the Love Connection episode. Okay. I don't know if you remember. Some some people out there they they watch and they might remember. Um, Russ Parr, he's another one. Um, he was a host for on the radio for a long time for uh, WKYS ninety three point nine. You know, but like I said, that's radio. So podcasts and stuff like that. I know the Breakfast Club is radio too, but yeah. they, they stream on YouTube. Like you just watch their stuff. Yeah, that's pretty much what I do. You know, um, but yeah, no, I definitely think the MV needs something like that, and at, that's where I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be up with them at some point. Definitely. You know what I mean? And like, you know, here's the thing. It's like you said. Like everybody should have that attitude of that they're the best. Like I'm the best podcaster, but I'm not saying I'm better than Vlad or Adam or. Charlemagne or any of these dudes but like i'm the best in the dmv because i'm the only one pretty much doing it there's yeah, like i said there's probably a few others but you know it's just confidence man like you know it's a, it's just like you go try to holler at a girl or something like she's not gonna give any play if you all timid and shy and stuff like that you gotta you gotta know what you gonna say you gotta mean what you say you right know what I'm saying? so you just got even if she say no just be confident you know what i'm saying like that's the yeah. worst that's the worst thing she can say is no you know don't be creepy but don't give up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Be confident, but don't be a creep. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like, that's that's like with the consistency. It's like, you got to learn how to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And also, it's like, there's that saying of like, if you ain't got something to say, don't say it. You right. know what I mean? Use that time to think about like, all right, next time, what am I going to say? Yeah, because there's know? definitely a lot of people that speak before they think and stuff. Like yeah. That. They ruin you know, they own opportunities, but yeah. Definitely. And it's like, it sucks when you got a friend like that. Cause you like, you can't bring them around for shit that you want them to see. You know what I mean? You got to like almost condition them ahead of time. Like, Hey man, don't be, 
Don't be bringing none of that. I love you, yeah. but don't be bringing none of that over here. <laughs> yeah, like, um, it, I don't know. It, it kind of brings me back to what well, a friend of mine told me about this uh, 0 30 80 rule. And um, I also made a song about it, kind of referencing okay. it. Um, you may have heard it. It was on um, this mixtape called The Illest Summer Ever. I know we was talking about Georgetown, you know, but now we're talking about mixtape, whatever. But yeah, um, but yeah so the 0 30 80 rule, basically, some of y'all may have heard this before. I uh, may have heard it explained differently, but basically, like, the zero, that's the guy who doesn't know how to speak to women. You know what I'm saying? That's the guy who, you know, he only gets women when his home his homeboys bring the women to him and shit like that. And then he gets frustrated when he's not getting no play. <laughs> he's like, oh, man, these shorties, they, they played out, man. Call, call some other shorties. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then, then, then the girls get mad and they leave. And now you ain't got you ain't got no you ain't got no shorties now. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, leave him at home. That's the zero. <laughs> he has no game. Um then the 30, he occasionally gets play. You know what I'm saying? Occasionally, but you know, he's usually rude, yelling obscenities at women from across the street. Like, hey yo, you know what I'm saying? Um, and they'll they'll get mad and that's and I speak or something like that. And then when they don't give him no play, then then they call him like out their name and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, so, and yeah, women just find them utterly repulsive and disgusting and shit. So, um, yeah, that's the 30. Um, but then the 80, now the 80, he's like the marksman. You know what I'm saying? He's not always going to, you know, hit his target, but, you know, sometimes he might have to miss. Right. Just so he can move, move someone out the way, you know, get his, ta- get his target and make his match, you know. Right. So, but the eighty, he's precise, you know, and he's patient. So on the board, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's gotcha. that's, pr- that's pretty much the whole zero thirty eight. I mean, my man's who's on the skit explaining it, he can explain it a little bit better, but that's pretty much the whole gist of it, though. I gotcha. Um, so for the cover art on the Georgetown freestyle, it's Compass Coffee on Wisconsin Ave, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So basically, I pretty much just took a candid photo of the street. You know what I'm saying? I made sure to get the Georgetown sign in there. Yeah, was that the reason that you chose that was the big glowing sign, or do you, like, hang out around that area? I mean, I, I'm I'm out that way quite often, you know what I'm saying? Like, I work myself. You know, like, I do Uber and stuff like that. Okay. So I'm pretty much around that area anyway. I'm just doing Uber rides and stuff. Um, or just anything. I'm just hanging out also. Right. You know what I'm saying? It seems so. like that's, like, one of the, you know, epicenters of that area. You know what I yeah, mean? Well, I mean, there's it's other parts of D.C., too, That's that's, like, active and stuff too but i just meant like georgetown specifically that seems like a big strip with the big sign oh yeah yeah that particular street i mean with the sign and stuff i mean it's definitely like a landmark that you can't really miss right you know what i'm saying so and the song is called georgetown freestyle so i'm just like well gotta gotta get this in there so yeah i just figured i go ahead and just you know take a picture of it take a picture of it real quick and you know we just format it and just maybe add some black and white but leave you know the the lights colored and stuff like that so it kind of pop out yeah you know like you ain't gotta put my name you ain't gotta put a title like you got the georgetown right there so make it more like artsy you know what i'm saying so that, that that's pretty much the whole thing that's how it came about you know i got you what locations in germantown and georgetown are significant to you especially like with your music and everything like that or just growing up there uh, I mean, I didn't grow up in Georgetown, but right, I'm saying oh, in Germantown. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, well, in Germantown, I mean, like, I pretty much moved a lot as a kid because remember, you know, I grew up with a single mom, so but we stayed in the area, but we just moved around a lot. So, I mean, I don't know. It's like I would say off Middlebrook Road for for the longest time. We stayed there, and you know, down the street from like Seneca Valley High School. Okay. You know, and you know that area, like the Georgetown, uh, the Germantown town center and stuff like that um you know you got the movie theater over there the top golf which is fairly new but you know it's pretty much a big part of the area now you know um like i said you got the movie theater the regal cinema out there it's been there for like 20 years now i remember when they first built that um i remember we took a field trip in sixth grade to go see the cat in the hat you know (laughs) so i was like Okay, we're see, we uh, we can't see fast. We can't see too fast, too furious. But right. I was like, whatever. I'm like, it gets us out of school for two hours. So I'm like, whatever. Guaranteed. Cool. cool we get free popcorn. All right, bet. So, um, yeah, but you know, it's, it's like I said, it's a cool area. I mean, I can't really name off the top of my head like landmark specifically, but you know, it's like it's a cool area though. You know, uh, they got a Dutch market. 
Nice. You know, uh, I don't know if y'all got that out here. Yeah, we got it. It's not like close by, but yeah, we, we got some. Okay, yeah. Um, I remember, well, I remember I went to Northwest and after school, most days, everybody would go hang out at the McDonald's across the street, you know, after school and stuff like that. And it, it could all, it, sometimes it could get a little ratchet over there, you know, <laughs> like it's always a fight breaking out or something like that or somebody calling the police, you know, because it's getting a little too out of control. But yeah. I got you. So now we'll uh, transition into some of your inspirations. And also, you sample a lot of famous beats and stuff like that in your music and everything. So we'll talk about what dreams may come, that whole project and everything like that. Now, you took inspiration for from Biggie's flow on Big Papa on a verse that, in Georgetown Freestyle. Well, actually, that wasn't on the original. That's not on the actual song. When you hear the actual song on streaming, like, the song okay. is just, that's not on there. That's just something I just use for like a live crowd and stuff. Gotcha. As a surprise, you know, I, I've actually done that a few times. I did that in Miami. They was they was they was feeling it, um, and of course you heard it two times, both times at soundstage right. and the auto bar. So it's just something for the live crowd because that's something that I do a lot. I study like other artists and how they do certain things, and sometimes they might throw in like uh, instrumental or something like that, and do like a re a quick remix or, or a free verse or something on there. I'm, they might, you know, incorporate it and mix it with their song, or they might create a whole different song completely with it, you know. So I just, like, study, like, other artists and just, like, hmm, like, okay, you know. I, I kind of practice it, too, to see how it, it flows, like, make sure it flows first, you know, and then we just mix it in there. So I, I'm glad that it came out good, and, you know, people was, like, really surprised, like, oh, like, oh, he got this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so, yeah, that, that that's pretty much how that came about, but, yeah. And also, I believe it was Dreams where you said, it ain't no biggie if Christopher Wallace did it. <laughs> um, is he your, like, biggest inspiration? Uh, definitely. I mean, even though I, w- I might have been a little too young when Biggie was around doing this thing, but, I mean, the impact is definitely felt. You know oh, yeah, like, it still we, hits. We, we still, and, like, he's been gone 26 years, I think. Wow. So, yeah, tw- 26 years, man, you know. Um, Tupac, you know, just about the same time too. You know, it's it's hard to imagine, and still, like neither one of their murders been solved um, to this day. A lot um, of good uh, videos and documentaries out. Oh yeah, touch on that. They still making like documentaries. That. They find new evidence and stuff. I'm just like, they got movies about them, you know. So I mean, but Drake it, just bought his damn ring. Yeah, I mean, but it, it goes to show the impact. You know, they left. Um, but I would say, yeah, Biggie for sure. He's definitely a big influence. I remember. Like, like I said, I, I was a little too young to fully, like, uh, appreciate Biggie and Tupac when they were alive and they primed doing their thing. I mean, I was definitely aware, for sure. Oh, yeah. You know, but I remember hearing these songs on the radio, but I, didn't re- I was too young to really know what, what it was at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but as I got older, you know, and, you know, with iTunes and stuff, when that came to be a thing in YouTube, and that started blowing up, it was like, you just start searching, going down the rabbit hole, and looking up these songs and albums, I was like, man, I remember the first time I heard Ready to Die, I was like, yo, this is a movie, this could be a movie, right? Right. Here. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, you know, if I ever was to be, be an artist myself, you know what I'm saying? I was like, this is this is what I, this is what I want to do right here, you know? That, so I would say, even though, like I said, my dad, he was like one of the main influences for me, and that, that was at a time when I was listening to Biggie. That was, like, before I became an artist, before I knew what I wanted to do. Um, but I knew that might have been, like, one of the early moments, early stages where I was like, okay, I might want to I might want to get into this. You know what I'm saying? So, but, yeah, like, Ready to Die, to me, that was like a movie. You know what I'm saying? Because the skits he had, what he was yeah. talking about, like, nobody at that time was talking about. And for him to be so young at that time, too, like, you got to imagine, like, when you see pictures of him, you think, like, yeah, like that's a grown, that's a grown, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, big as hell. But he's he was at he was like twenty four when he died. You know, what yeah. I'm saying? He, he was young as hell. You know, and so I believe, well, he was like maybe twenty two, twenty three, or something like that when he put that album out. You know, so a lot of vulnerable shit on there too. Yeah, like suicidal thoughts. I was like, just getting ready to say like, nobody was like nowadays. It's okay to talk about mental health and all that stuff like that. Yeah. But you know, at the time, like he was talking about stuff that. You know, Pete wasn't really saying or was afraid to say, so, you know, yeah, man, it's just like, wow. This is still, like, kind of, like, it's still up in the air, kind of, like, if men's mental health is really, like, 
focused on do you i mean definitely there's been improvements do you feel like there's still a lot of like work to be done with that oh oh for sure it's definitely work to be done you know it's always going to be people that say well uh as a man you know traditionally we're taught just to hold stuff in and be strong and as i said earlier you know for a long time that's how i felt too because like i told you earlier you know i was kind of weary about sharing things with my mom or speaking up talking about what i was going through you know, like, I remember she even, like, got me in therapy at one point, you know what I'm saying, because I, I just wouldn't speak or, and I was going through stuff. Um, and I don't know, at the time, I, I wasn't really thinking about it. I was just like, I was like, why am I here? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I'm just like, at this point, I'm just like, all right, well, it gets me out of school for, for about an hour and a half. So I'm just like, all right, cool. So I, we'll just milk this as long, as long as we can until, you know, the therapist caught on to what I was doing. So... But yeah, I think uh, a lot of people have that attitude with therapy, but also it's like, I'll be honest, it it is it can be hard to get stuff out of therapy. I y- mean, yeah, man, like you in there with a complete stranger, and, and that's just like people that's grown adults that's going to yeah. like imagine being a kid. You know, I was a kid. I was probably like fifteen or something at the time, maybe sixteen. Yeah. This might have been like right before she died. Um, so it's like I'm like I, I don't know this man. You know what I'm saying? I don't know this person. I'm like you want me to like talk about my life to a complete stranger and stuff like that even though it's gonna be all confidential like he's not sharing it with nobody but still you're sharing your business with a complete stranger and stuff you know and you gotta really open yourself up and be vulnerable you know for like 45 minutes or so i'm just you know at at that time i i i don't know i I just wasn't feeling it you know what i'm saying so i was just like whatever i'm it gets me out of school for like an hour and a half you know so yeah and come back to school at mcdonald's and shit and stun on everybody you know but um yeah at the time i didn't really realize it but looking back i could see yeah i was dealing with things and i probably should have spoke up to my mom and stuff like that probably would have saved a bunch of money on therapy but right uh, you know she was just trying to help like i said she was just looking out making sure you know me and my sister was good and everything but you know it, it, it's nothing i could really do or say that really changed because she's not here anymore so i can't really say what i need to say but you know looking back i would say yeah i probably should have spoke up and it's definitely things i probably need to say otherwise you know i would have been in a better place you know and things probably would have been different i don't know you know but yeah never know the when i was at the auto bar interviewing some bands there was a band playing called living in fear i did not interview them but um, one of the guys was talking to me from that band, and I actually might follow through with this. He said he wanted to, because, uh, you know, a lot of people tell me, like, yeah, I've had the idea to start a podcast, so what you're doing is pretty cool. And he was telling me he thought about doing this, like, ho- podcast based around hardcore bands, but also mental health, because he said there's a lot of, you know, depression and stuff like that that comes through touring and then getting done and everything like that. Mm-hmm. So I might actually follow through with that. And, you know, because... It's one of those things where, you know, I, and I think a lot of men, you know, they, they don't feel comfortable because I see it pointed out how, like, when they do become vulnerable, it's eventually, like, used against them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's what I say. Like, there's still, like, a lot of work to be done. And even though there's, like, the whole awareness for men's mental health, it's like, I'll be honest Aside from a few people posting stuff, it seems like oh, it's only it's mostly men supporting each other for up men's mental health. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's not really a shot at ladies and stuff like no, that. No, of course not. It's just, it's, it's just more social media BS that's warping people's minds to yeah. think a certain way. Um, like I just saw some meme or something recently saying like men shouldn't vent to women or something like that because, you know, whatever ladies will women will use that against them it's not point. every woman yeah, it's let's not, make that very clear yeah, it's not every it's not everybody for sure but it know? happens you yeah. know yeah it, it happens it, with a petty girlfriend is yeah. what it happens with yeah like there, there are vindictive people out there you know and they'll just use that against you and don't realize that could be more harmful than it is like you think you're getting your, your lick back but mm. you actually doing more harm than good like you just okay you get you getting your lick back but you might drive this person to actually kill themselves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, you know, people always think shit, like, especially, like, more in, like, the formative years, school and everything like that, people think all sorts of shit's funny until some consequences happen from it, whether that's, like, like you said, unfortunately someone taking their life or they get the dog shit beat out of them because that person finally, you know, shit happened. And that's why a lot of, you know, mass shootings have happened because people have, you know, 
they can all people can only hold shit in for so long and you know that's why we need you know real focus because yeah they they definitely uh, like you see it like in tv and movies they mm-hmm. definitely put more focus on like there was a show on netflix called 13 reasons why yeah you know they definitely had the whole focus on on that yeah you even mentioned it in one of your songs <laughs> oh yeah 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 that, that was on uh, the album the project you was talking about uh, what dreams may come so that that yeah. particular project um just a segue real quick uh, yeah that, we're pretty much talking about that project right so now that so. came out last year and that was actually going to be that was supposed to be the illest summer ever volume three okay but my my team um they wanted they wanted me to drop a project like a few months early so i was like it was like maybe a few months before the summer so i was like all right well it might be a little may is just it's kind of on some on on the dot on the line of summer, but not really. So I was like, they wanted me to drop something around May. So I was like, all right, it's kind of early, but whatever, you know. Um, I'm, I usually get stuff done quick anyway. So I just put this together, had this idea, and the first thing that came to mind was, what what am I going to call it? You know, what's the inspiration? What's the theme going to be? Because I like themes. I like have, telling a story with my projects and stuff. Um, so I said, well, I thought about this old Robin Williams movie called. Uh, had the same title, What Dreams Make. Okay. Come. I was going to ask about the meaning of the name because yeah. I think when I looked up that, I think it did come up with that movie. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in that movie, like, if you look at it's a scene where he looks at a tree that his wife painted for him in the movie. Because he, he, so people that didn't see the movie, like, Robert Williams, he's like a doctor. He, he died. He went to heaven. And I don't know, like, his wife committed suicide and then she went to hell. He had to go travel to hell to go bring her back you know it's what it's wild it's, it's a wild ass movie but and Cuba Gooden Jr. is in it too um but yeah so his wife painted something it was like a tree and as she was painting it like he saw the tree in his heaven and stuff like that so and that's where that you see the, the cover that's where inspiration for the cover came from from, okay. that, from that movie and the, as well as the title too so basically just you know putting awareness like like, okay, go after your dreams and also shedding some light on, like, mental health awareness as well. And I dropped it, like, towards the end of May. And as you know, like, May is also, like, mental health awareness month. And since it's, like, the end of May, it also goes into June. And June is also men's mental health awareness month. So, right. in a way, it kind of worked out. Some things just work out the way they're supposed to work out because I wanted to do, like, a fun summer project. I wanted to do Ill Summer Ever 3, close out the trilogy. But... You know, it just gave me an opportunity to kind of just, like, open myself up, challenge myself, and do something different. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's still it's still some fun songs on there. Oh, know? yeah. Don't get, don't get me wrong, but it gave me a chance to kind of just challenge myself and just tackle, like, a different subject matter. You know what I'm saying? And also, like, you know, like, like I was saying, like, how I was kind of afraid to kind of open up about stuff when I was younger. It gave me a chance to kind of get some more things off my chest, you know. That's why I got that song in there, The Great Depression, you know, just talking about mental health. Um, you know, which is pretty much the the main song in there, just talking about that. I feel like that's like the centerpiece of that of that whole project, and um, also just coming up in the industry too, dealing with hardships too. So yeah, um, one of the lines that I think I liked on that, um, I think it was everybody go through shit, but I was really going through it, something like that, right? Mm-hmm. Do you want to further elaborate on that? Uh, I mean, we we all go through shit, man. You know, er- everybody goes through through it. You know, at one point, you know. Um, I'm sure a lot of people don't know unless you're like there and you're in the know. Uh, at one point, I was homeless. I was sl- sleeping in my car, um, you know, and mainly just my own doing. You know, at one point, I just took my eye off the ball. I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. Um, so, yeah, you know, and all because I'm just following this dream, you know what I'm saying, just, just staying on it. But I took my eye off the ball of other things, you know, and... Yeah, so I just had to just deal with it. So I'm just like, I wasn't jobless, though. I still had a job to work. I still had a car. So, you know, I was sleeping in my car, still went to work, and I just had to bust my ass until I just got myself out of that hole. You know, at one point, I remember, like, I was sleeping in the front of my barbershop for, like, a week, you know. Um, It wasn't as bad as you think, though. Like, I wasn't, like, like, sleeping in the barber chair. Like, (laughs) he had, like, a separate room, like, a lounge or something like that. Like, a couch. Not on the floor with next to all the hair. Yeah, no, no. He had, like, a separate room, like, a couch and shit. You know, he had a TV. Shit, he even had fire stick. I was in there watching, you know, watching movies and shit. You know what I'm saying? Go to 7-Eleven, get some snacks, and just chill out. You know, I did that for about a week. Um, 
but yeah, and then, you know, eventually just, you know, also just living from relative to relative, you know, and that just got old. I'm just like, man, I, I got to really just get it together. So it's just like, how am I going to balance, you know, work life and, you know, doing this music shit too. It's like, you know, because at a time, like I was still doing music. I was still making music, putting stuff out. But I wasn't, like, putting out no project or anything. I was doing, like, a whole lot of shows. Um, so I, I would just play, like, maybe one single at a time, I think, just to stay current, stay relevant. But, you know, I, I really had to, like, just buckle down, just focus and get myself straight, you know, because, like I said, we talk about how it takes money to make money, and yep. I can't really make any money if I ain't got any, got any money, you know what I'm saying? I can't do what I need to do with the music, you know, if I don't have any, any bread in my pocket. So I just had to focus on you know, priorities and get stuff in check, put myself in check and just handle shit, you know. Um, but, uh, it, it, you know, it is what it, it was a tough time. It was a challenge for sure. Um, but, you know, I mean, good thing, you know, fortunately, all things forget. I know I put my family through <laughs> a tough time at that point. You know, I, I know it wasn't the easiest to deal with, but thankfully, you know, water's under the bridge and everybody's all good. Um, so, you know, time heals all. So, and we back on track, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I'm still doing my thing, you know, so it's a blessing I'm able to get opportunities and still do what I love to do, you know, be able to perform, perform at Soundstage and be on this podcast with you, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. You know, so, it, you know, just, just staying consistent. It's, it's like even do all that, you know, I'm still doing it. So it's like I never gave up. It's just I kind of had to slow down. I didn't stop. I just had to slow down, you know, and handle other shit first, you know. Yeah, I wanted to talk about this line. I think it was on Dedicated Black Magic. Because um, mm. sometimes my notes get mixed yeah, up. Yeah, I, I love that track too. I find it funny how you gotta work a 9 to 5, 45 minute drive, pay bills until you die. I'll be damned if a J-O-B play with me like I ain't the illest that you ever seen. <laughs> I want Because we, we were talking about working other jobs and stuff like yeah. that. Um, aside from what you've already mentioned, what jobs have you worked outside of music? And talk about like more of the struggle that goes along with that. I mean, well, for one, you know, your time is valuable, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, there's nothing wrong with working a nine to five. Nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? Get get your money, do what you gotta do. Um, but your time is definitely valuable, you know what I'm saying? If it feels like you're at a place that's draining you, that's you know, like you, you worked at a job before, like if you first get yeah. there, like 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 you're just happy to be there, you know, you're ready to meet everybody, you're ready to get the because you're not used to it yet, right? And then when you start to see what's really going on. It's like, oh, I gotta go back here. You pull, you pull up to work. Like, man, this building's still standing. They ain't burning down yet, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, it, it's easy to get jaded at at some jobs and stuff like that. Where when you first started, it's like, oh, like it's cool. Like, okay, yeah, I'm get I'm about to get this money, I'm about to stack up, and it's like, oh man, I gotta come back here again. But you know, you know, you got bills to pay. Um, so, yeah, like, I, I've done a handful of jobs. Like I said earlier, um, I used to be a temp worker, a temp agency, doing hard labor and stuff like that. So they had me doing, like, you know, warehouse warehouse work or doing deliveries off trucks and stuff. Um, and then eventually, like, I actually got a real job at one point, worked at this outdoor patio store. Okay. Um, Patio.com. It was off of Rockville Pike in, in Rockville. It's not there anymore, um, but I believe they still have a store in Tyson's Corner, I believe. Um, so yeah, I did that for about a year and then, uh, I worked as a server at Denny's for about a year and a half, you know what I'm saying? And that was a challenge to me too. Cause again, you know, being a shy, shy person, you know, semi anti-social, -anti you know, it's like, man, you, you're a server, you got to deal with people and stuff. Especially, and then I was going to say, then that's one deal. of the hardest jobs it, I can think man, of. Man, I'm telling you right now. After doing that, I got so much respect for people in the service industry and the restaurant industry and stuff like that, you know, that handle people's food and deal with, you know, unpleasant customers and stuff like that. Because you do deal with those. I mean, for the most part, everybody was cool. But, you know, you get those people because people are <clears throat> when you're hungry, you know, you get a little you get a little agitated. You know, it's like, well, where's the food? At? You know yeah. Saying? So, um so but that's yeah. a human being, guys. Relax. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it's, you de it's definitely a lot uh, that goes into that, man. But, you know, you just got to have patience. Like, it, it definitely taught me to have patience. I mean, I'm already a patient person, but it taught me to have more patience, <laughs> you know. Yes, definitely. So, um, but, yeah, I remember when I first started, like, I wasn't necessarily the best, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I definitely had to, like, 
like learn and like really study, you know, how to, how to do that. But yeah, like once I got, got in my groove, you know, I was on, you know, shoot, I was doing the graveyard shift by myself, you know, mm. most nights and stuff, you know, unless it got like really crazy, I need like, you know, somebody else to come in and help out for a little bit. But yeah, like I was handling the graveyard shift by myself most nights and stuff. And, you know, I got along with everybody, so I don't. I, I don't, that's important you know so i ain't really had no issues with nobody and stuff like that unless you know they, they gave me all the tables or they weren't trying to clean up their tables or something like that but yeah you know but for the most part i got along with everybody and you know it is what it is but you know eventually i just had to leave up out of there because i knew i didn't want to be a server you know right <laughs> you know so i'm just like yeah, you got to use those jobs <clears throat> the same way that they use you, yeah. all right? Like, I use this money to further benefit this podcast. Yeah. And I get pretty decent benefits. So, like, one of the benefits that my job has is they have a safety shoe program where mm. you get $100 to use for safety shoes. So, they have a work truck that pulls up full of stuff that you can pick out there. Or you can go on this website and pick out, you know, and you get a $100 voucher. So, they have stuff on the website that's over $100. Now, you know Doc Martin Boots? They're just like a popular uh, boot. I think they're from London and whatnot, but very popular like in the punk scene and whatnot. Okay. I've thought about getting these boots for a while now. Um, and I'm like scrolling on the safety website. I had never gotten the safety shoes before because I'm like, I don't need another pair of shoes. And if I do, it's usually not one of these pairs. You know mm. what I mean? I'm like, I'll just wear my regular shoes. I'm like, let me see what they got. I'm like, oh shit, they got Doc Martens. $170 pair of boots and I could get them for 70 bucks. So it's like, that's just one example. You know what I mean? Another one is like, they give you 500 a year to use for well your wellness and ergonomics. So like, you can use that, go get you a gym membership, mm. go get you some workout equipment, an Apple Watch, whatever. So it's like, I'm you know, even though this fucking job like can suck sometimes and like they be hitting you with them quotas and you know what I mean? You be feeling like dirt sometimes, like use that job. Like don't, you know do it legally you know yeah but fucking get what you can get out of that job and it's like you said knowing when you know if it's literally burdening your soul every day yeah. which all jobs kind of do but if it's to the point where like you're choking up in the car and you can't even get in like it's time to go yeah you know what i mean yeah i mean that's one thing i will say is like doing all these different jobs um i even worked at the hospital too you know um just cleaning the rooms and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, did that for about a year or two. But I will say, uh, doing all these different jobs, you definitely learn different things, different trades and stuff. Like, you know, I said it used to be a server. So, you, it kind of like, uh, you learn better, like, customer service skills and how to talk to people and stuff, um, what, what people want and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, you definitely learn a bunch of different things. I feel like if you don't learn something then it's truly a waste of time you know what i'm saying that's that's with anything with jobs relationships if you didn't learn anything from someone or something then you're wasting your time it yeah. really is a waste of time and my brother was telling me too it's like you always got to move up or move out and yeah. that's you know if you're not able to move up at all exactly even if sometimes moving up can be you know not getting a better promotion but sometimes moving up means taking a lower promotion so that you're a little bit happier yeah i've thought about it before where if this starts making me some money, I might eventually kind of demote myself down to like the bottom level position because it's easy as shit. Yeah. And I can still keep my benefits and everything like that, but go through less stress. And, you know, I forgot exactly how it all goes, but there's a really great quote where it basically talks about how we put our body and our health through shit in order to make money. And then we go and take that money and put it right back into our health because we're concerned about our health. And it's like kind of like a whole cycle like mm. that defeats its purpose. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. You just got to like really figure it. You got to have a work-life balance, yeah. you know? And sometimes that means coming into work tired. Like when I go out to a show, I work on the weekends. So I start work mm. at 6 a.m. on Saturday. So if I go out to a show on Friday night, I'm going to be tired as hell the next day. But I'm like, you know what? I did something outside of working at this warehouse. Yeah. So life's a little more fulfilling that way sometimes. Yeah, sometimes you got to make sacrifices, man. You know, I mean, if it's something that if it's contributing to your passion and what you want to do, you know, definitely go for it, you know. Definitely. 
On the song Dreams, it opens with some dialogue from Inception, right? Yeah. Dreams feel real while we're in them. It's only when we wake up that we realize something was actually strange. What about that movie and that quote was like so significant to you that you put it in the song? I mean, Inception, that's like, it's top five all time and it's not number five. You know what I'm saying? Not, not even number four, maybe not even number three. That's like one of my favorite movies of all time. You know, and I, I love what they did, you know, explaining how dreams work and stuff like that. Um, you know, uh, it was just a great movie, you know, and Le- Leonardo DiCaprio, that's one of my favorite actors too. Um, you know, you also had Tom Hardy in there, um, a few, a few other people, but the, the visuals in that was crazy. How they was going in and out of people's dreams, you know, and how they work and stuff. And that's why I wanted, that's why I wanted this project to feel. I wanted to feel like you were in the dream because music, sometimes you can get lost, right? Yeah. It feels like, you know, it can make you feel a certain way. And you just kind of get lost in it, you know what I'm saying? And that's why I wanted to feel. That's why I want the opening to kind of be like that, like you're in a dream and you're just about to get lost, you know. And also kind of spreading <clears throat> awareness about mental health and all that stuff too, you know what I'm saying? Because I mean, dreams in your head and stuff. So you know, hey. So yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much it, man. Just just getting lost, just losing yourself into it, and you know just. Speaking from the heart, that's pretty much it. I got you. Have you ever seen anything before it happens in your dreams, like ahead of time? Or like just what are some of your craziest dream experiences? I mean, I've had some deja vu moments where it's like should be crazy. Yeah, like I, I I like I felt like I've been here before, I've seen this happen, you know. And I can't re- I mean, I can't really recall dreams because it's like most of the time you don't really remember your dreams. Exactly. Like I, I I know I've been in like deep sleep sometimes. Like you'd be real tired. You just they call it like lucid dreaming. They even explain that in the movie Inception yeah, too, like lucid yeah. dreaming, where you're like in such a deep sleep where it's like it feels real kinda, where you're just like immersed and stuff. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's just like it was like whoa, it's like okay, and then you wake up, it's like whoa, what, the, what happened? Yeah. You know, so. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I can't really recall um, something happening from a dream that I saw the night before or whatever like that. But I mean, I've definitely, I definitely had visions. I definitely like manifested what I wanted to do. Like I knew what I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like I can't really say I dreamed that. I can't really say. I mean, I know it's it's your dream. Your dream to want to do this to want to, you know do so many great things and stuff, but I can't really say, oh, I, I dreamed I would be here. It's just, I knew, I, I envisioned that, you know, it's like, I Maybe knew. Maybe it's just so ingrained into our subconscious that it's like, it feels like deja vu when it actually happens, yeah. you know, because like, there's been points that I've manifested, I guess, and it's like, when it happens, I, I've been like, why have I dreamt this or seen this before? Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you you can dream things for a reason that, just, you know, your dreams send you a message um, of what's to come. I even I even heard like uh, people that pop up in your dreams are usually thinking about you. Um, I've heard that too, and I'm, it's I'm, like I'm I, just I, like I, I, when I hear that I'm just like, well, Megan Good has been thinking about me. I'm yeah, like, right. <laughs> I'm like someone's out there trying to play with people's mo- emotions. Right. You know, I don't know how true that is, but I mean, hey, that know. would be crazy. Yeah, that would be absolutely crazy that, if that, that was true. Yeah, that would be crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, you definitely dream or you think about stuff. But me, I just like I manifest. I feel like life is all about energy. You know, like we're all made up of energy. Uh, your dreams are even energy. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like uh, whatever you think and whatever you speak, you know what I'm saying. Eventually, that's going to come into existence, and the universe is going to translate that. It's going to mold it. And it's, sometimes it may not always give you what you want. That's why you got to be specific with what you want. That's why I say you got to say what you mean and mean what you say and be specific. You know, so <laughs> like you say, like, women will say they want a good man. Or, no, women will say they want a man. I'm like, okay, you'll find a man, but he right. may not be the type of guy you want. <laughs> you got to say you want a good man, you know, a love man, someone that's going to respect you. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with fellas. You know, you say you're looking for a woman and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? Okay, you know, like, don't don't just say, oh, um, excuse my language, but <laughs> like, don't just say, like, oh, I'm looking, like, where the bitches at, you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, no, say, where, where the women at, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Because the universe is going to read that and it's going to feed back that certain energy, like. Yeah, it's it, going to give it, you it, some it, trash women. Yeah, it, it all comes back around, so it's like, you got to. Be careful what you speak into existence, man. So it's Definitely. like I knew I wanted to perform at Howard University Homecoming, and it's like I thought about it, 
you yeah, know, go I'm, into that and what that experience was like. Because I read that it was like it, it was at that moment when you performed, like that was very formative for you. Yeah, well, well, my mom she went to Howard University. Okay. You know, um, I think she was a art major. Um, there or no architect. She was an architect major. Um, and you know that day, uh, it was like a, it was alumni day. So when we performed off Georgia Avenue at uh, Listen Vision Studios, it's right there across the street from Howard. You know, so a lot of people out, you know, you have people like passing by, you know, some people stay because we perform right there on the steps in front of the Listen Vision uh, okay. Studios. Um, and that's like one of the oldest radio stations, studios in D.C. You gotcha. Know, you know, so that, that was a big deal uh, to perform at Howard. You know what I'm saying? It's like I'm probably the only person around my way that could say that, you know, like who can say they perform at How- the live is homecoming weekend in the country. You know what I'm saying? Um so yeah, I mean, I, like I said, Donnie, Donnie Breeze was with me that day. He's performing with me, um, he, and he was trying to find parking. I was like, I was about to go on, you know. It was like that scene out of Making the Band. I don't know if you ever seen Making the Band. You might be too young. Um, this is an old show, an uh, old reality show that uh, Diddy had back in the day. He was putting together a whole bunch of people in a group and stuff like that. And uh, one of the people um, named Dylan, he was always late and stuff like that. Um, but I think in, in one particular episode, he wasn't actually late. It was actually like Chopper and uh, Fred. They was running late. And right before was everybody was about to go on stage and they hop out the cab. <laughs> it was like, you know, so that's, that, that's, you know, that same moment happened with Donnie. So I was like, as soon as I had the mic in my hand, I see him come up the steps. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Because I'm like, man, <laughs> you know, we had the set mixed. And I'm like, I had his verses already set. And I'm like, man, we can't change this up with nothing. So I'm just like, yeah. So I'm glad he was able to make it. Um, but yeah, it was, a good, it was a good show. It was a good performance and everything. And, you know, just one more thing, scratch off the bucket list. Um, but like I said, it meant a lot because my mom went to Howard. And also the football team, uh, the Howard team, they was playing – uh, North Carolina A and T. My dad, he went to A and T, so it was kind of, kind of weird, you know. Like my dad's college, mom's college, both the football teams playing against each other. You know, what I'm saying I'm performing, so I don't know, man. I, I I'm not gonna say it's fate or anything like that, but I just felt like in that moment, I felt like I was meant to be there. You know. I got gotcha. you. So. Now the song never change. Um, I think it was this song where he said it was something like '92 baby talking about wrestling yeah. and comics mm-hmm. on the daily. And then also, it was Georgetown Freestyle, right, where you said Bruce Wayne swag with the Peter Parker <laughs> tendencies. Yeah. Now, I'm assuming that you're a big fan of comics, wrestling, oh, yeah. Marvel, all that stuff, yeah. since you were a kid and everything. Yeah, oh, yeah I, I'm, a, I'm a big uh, comic nerd, wrestling nerd, man. Um, so you, you'll definitely hear like a lot of wrestling references or movie or comic book references, video who, games. Who are some of your favorite wrestlers and like what are some of your favorite uh, comic franchises and stuff? Oh, uh well, hands down, The Rock. That's that's my okay. all time favorite wrestler. You know, um, at the time, you know, when I was watching, like he was like one of the few like black wrestlers out at the time. I know he's like mixed with Samoa and everything, but right. he's also had black too. So he was like one of the few uh, wrestlers that that look like me. You know, what I'm saying I turn on TV, I see someone look like me. You know, he's he's talking his shit and he's backing it up. You know, he's on top of the card. He's in the main events. He's the world champ. You know, and everybody's just on board. You know, everybody rocking with him. I'm just like, wow. You know. Like, the dude, he like he just oozes charisma. It's just like when he walks in the room, he commands the room every time he walks into an arena or whatever. You know, and, and you can see it, it. It translate well with him doing the movies and stuff too. That's why he's so successful with the movies. You know, but yeah, like that's my all time favorite wrestler. You know, one of my idols growing up and stuff. You know, and kind of like like my swag and my image. I kind of like model that a little after him too. Okay, you know what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, you'll definitely hear that. You uh, still see some of his old clips. Yeah, you like know, today. Oh yeah, it, uh, on YouTube, th- I definitely spin the block and play some of the old interviews he did in wrestling. Shit is the old WWE. Some of it was so out of pocket, but it was oh. so funny. Like oh, that yeah. means shut up, bitch. Oh yeah, that shit is so funny. Oh, yeah, a lot of that they can't do. <laughs> they def- definitely get canceled. If they did, you know, even half of that stuff today. Oh, I know. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, the, the Rock, he was definitely. Up there, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, of course, Undertaker, um, you know, DX, Degeneration X, um, who else? Uh, Kane, you know, when he had the mask and stuff. Um, shoot, it's a lot. I, I could do it. I'd be here all day just naming down, my, naming my favorite wrestlers and stuff. Uh, the Hardy Boys. Um, but yeah, I, I could be here all day. 
Uh, but yeah, wrestling, you know, that was like a, a big influence on me. You know, I started watching that like around like 99, 2000, you know, just got into it and just came on TV one day and I just got hooked. Okay. You know, as far as like, you know, comics and stuff like, like Batman, Spider-Man, you know, like I think Batman might have been the first one I got introduced to first. You okay. Know, I think, uh, like I said, I was too young. I might have missed Michael Keaton's two movies. I was born in 92, so I was about maybe six months old when Batman Returns came out. Um, but I did watch it later. But the first Batman movie I ever did see, like in real time, was Batman Forever. Okay. And that was the third Batman movie in the 90s with uh, Val Kilmer when he took over. Um, and just looking back at it, it's crazy how that movie is canon or in the same universe as the two Michael Keaton movies. And they're... And totally, they're different, you know what I'm saying? Okay. But, but somehow, they're still the same. But now they got this whole multiverse thing, so they could write it off and say it's a, it's a different universe. Yeah, what do you think about that? Some people, I guess, think that it's like, oh, it's getting too crazy. I mean, if you're not... I feel like the casual people, they're the only ones that's really saying that. People that's not really in the know or don't read the comics. Right. But if you like a fan, if you follow up on all this, you'll get what's going on. I mean, some of it, it does get confusing. Like, you know, that's up to the writers and the filmmakers to kind of explain that, but... It's not that hard to explain. It's like, especially with the multiverse, I mean, it's not just Marvel and DC. Like, it's like Hollywood in general has a whole multiverse thing or share universe thing going on now, you know. Um, I think one movie won an Academy Award is like uh, yeah. everything, everywhere, all at once or something like that. Um, that, that was like a multiverse type movie, you know. Uh, that movie with Jet Li, the one, that's another multiverse movie that people don't talk about enough, you know. Um but yeah, like Batman, he was definitely one of the first superheroes I was introduced to. Like Batman Forever, I, I ran that VHS to the yeah. ground. I don't think I don't remember watching it in theaters, but I know I had we had the VHS tape and I ran that to the ground. Like I that was always on repeat, you know, along with Power Rangers, you know. You know, my dad used to record all the Power Rangers episodes or at least as many as he could, and I just watched the reruns of that. You know, then I got into Spider Man, you know, they had the cartoon and stuff, you know, and yeah, and then now you see Spider Man like Spider Man doing numbers with the movies and you know, the last one was awesome across Spider Verse. I don't know if you saw that one. I don't think I've seen like the latest ones oh, in yeah. full length. I've seen oh, like clips and stuff like that. Well, definitely the last one it's an animated movie, not the Tom Holland one, but it's okay. an animated. But um that 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 one was great though. That that might be like one of the best Spider Man movies I've ever seen though. I saw like the game footage and stuff like that. I watched a playthrough of like the recent Spider Man I mean, game, and that shit was pretty crazy. You got the games on lock too, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I'm just like, yeah, like, like Batman, Spider Man, those like two of the big. Like you got Superman there too, and it's crazy because Superman came first, but yet he's he's always <laughs> overshadowed. He's always overshadowed by Batman, you know what I'm saying? That's true. You no, know, you know, and, and Spider Man too, even though. Spider Man's in a different world with Marvel and stuff, but still, it's like those are like the big three right there as far as most recognizable superheroes and stuff. Yeah, tell me more about the line Bruce Wayne swag, Peter Parker tendencies. I know what Bruce Wayne swag is. He's rich, he got the cars, but what is Peter Parker tendencies? That one got me thinking. Well, again, well, you think of Peter Parker and Spider Man, like Peter Parker, he's like, he's smart, he's a genius at genius level, um, but. You know, he's also like kind of timid, shy. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. Spider Man, he gets when he put, he becomes Spider Man, he puts the mask on. He you know he's talking his shit. You know, so he gets a little arrogant, a little cocky. You know, so he, he's more comfortable. He's coming out of his shell. But when he's Peter Parker, you know, he's like shy. He's you know doesn't know what, yeah. he, he's tripping over his words when he talks to Mary Jane and stuff like that. You know, but you know it's kind of like it's like like the Bruce, the Bruce Wayne swag, Peter Parker line. It's like. Okay, it's like, okay, I know how to dress, you know, I know how to carry myself well, um, speak well and everything. But at the same time, I'm also like, I'm a nerd too at the same time, you know what I'm saying? I like to, I like, I like to play video games, I like to watch wrestling, you know, <laughs> read comic books and stuff like that. But I'm still a chill, chill dude and stuff like that, you know, too, so. Definitely. Um, for Missed Out, I wanted to talk about this line. I let it slip that I was a rapper, bruh. Does that have like bad connotations in your experience? No, no, not really. It's just um, I don't know. As an artist, sometimes I don't know. As an artist, it's weird because as an artist, you want to promote yourself, you want to put yourself out there, but I just feel like you don't want people like judging you and have to go on through, have to explain stuff and why you're doing this, you know? Because like I said, there's people, as I told you, like there's people that have told me like they probably don't have any faith or think I'm that good or something like that. So, 
you kind of just hold stuff in. And I think with any artist, even if you're not an like, actual artist, you know, some you, you probably heard some artists, they probably like hide their work or they don't really show people they work until they like, finish. Right. That, that's kind of like me um, and, to a degree. But I don't know. It's like I don't want to. What I meant by that line specifically is like I didn't want to lead off with that. You know what I'm saying? It's like right, right. You, you want to, you want that person, especially if you like pursuing like a chick. It's like you want her to get to know you for you, and that use you know your profession. You know, trying to you know get that shorty and, and shit yeah. like that. Does That's, that tie into this line? Because I wanted to talk about this as well. Um, imagine if the shoe was in, on the other foot. Tell me, girl, how that would look? Yeah. So I mean, that holds. Yeah, that, that that whole scenario was crazy because it's actually based off of like a real life situation. You know, I just met a girl at a, my cousin's birthday party. Um, you know, and she actually came at me. You know, she asked my cousin to introduce us and stuff. You know, and we was you know we was talking. You know, we hit it off and stuff. Um, set up a time like hang out and stuff, go get drinks and stuff, and you know then she like kind of ghosted me out of nowhere and stuff mm. and which is weird because i'm like you the one that wanted to talk to me <laughs> right you know i was like what's going on you know so and i ain't hear from her for like maybe two weeks or so and then like so then i'm at a show i'm doing i'm in the middle of a show i just got done performing and my cousin was the same cousin that introduced us and stuff he's with me and then like then she hit me up in the dms i showed my cousin's like like can you believe it's like she she just hit me you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't heard from her like two weeks. He was like, oh. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so he so he actually told me that she had a bad experience with previous relationships and, you know, she never had a guy um wanna do stuff with her and take her out. I was like, so she never been on dates? So I was like, right. we, we almost like at this time, like we almost thirty years old and stuff. I'm like, we in our <laughs> mid twenties, like, what? So but it's like at the same time, I kind of feel for it. It was like, damn, you know. So I was like, that's kind of sad, you know. So it's like, I didn't really know what to say. But at the same time, you ca- you could have just told me that. Because I'm like, what if the shoe was on the other foot and I left you hanging like that? You probably would have thought I was, some- yeah. I was with some other chick or something, you know. Guaranteed. Um, or, you know, whatever. Or didn't care. So I'm just like, you know, like the energy just wasn't really the same. So I'm just like, okay. So. Then my cousin arranged some little meet or whatever like that. He invited me to come out, hang out, and she just happened to be there on some surprise shit. Like he let me know at like the last minute, I'm like who's who's coming, you know. <laughs> so I'm just I'm just gonna be there to see what she say, you know, see how right. she act, you know. And I'm just gonna give her an opportunity just to kind of explain herself, you know. And she just kind of gave me the look and came in there thinking everything's all good. I'm like, no, like you kind of left me hanging. You know, and then I get, and before that, like, I gave her another shot to hang out, and she goes to me again. Mm. You know, so I, I even mentioned that in the song, too, I, th- I think. <laughs> um, it's been a minute since I heard it, but, you know, it's like, you kind of left me hanging twice. And it's like, okay, I understand your situation. You're a little cautious, you know, but at the same time, you got to talk. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're not going to get anywhere without communication. And I always say, like, any relationship, especially if you start now, you know, you're pursuing a relationship with somebody, you're trying to get to know somebody, like, you got to communicate, you got to talk, you know, otherwise you're not going to get too far, you know what I'm saying, and you kind of just wasting my time and your time, you know, so, um, so I don't know what, what the situation was, she said, like, her phone had broke or something like that the second time, I was like, okay, Okay, it's now, always the phone. Now, now your phone it broke. So always on your phone, but yeah, your I, phone. So she pull, so she pulls up to to the bar and stuff, and I'm just like sitting there, just giving giving her this look, like, okay, you gonna talk? And she, you know, what I'm saying she just kind of looked crazy and then walked away. So I'm just like, all right, well, that's dead. Damn. <laughs> so I'm just like, you know, so I, I, I'm just good on the whole dating for right now. It's just like I'm just focused on music. You know, that happened like years ago and stuff. Too. Yeah. But you know, I'm just like, I'm just, I'm just good on that, man. It's, it it yeah. takes a lot for me to make a chick like my girl or something. Like, you know, we really have to vibe. We really have to connect. You know, and I gotta see where your head at. You know, like she gotta look good too. But at the same time, I just gotta see where your head at and make sure we on the same page. On the same page. Definitely. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just not in the business of wasting time. You know, I got too much going on, and you know, and. I'm not trying to waste any more time. It's like I, you know, I kind of already lost track of time when I was homeless sleeping out of my car and I had to get my shit straight. You know, now, you know, then I got to plan dates and stuff and you're not even trying to, you know, respect my time. It's like, nah. 
So I'm good on that. I got you, man. I brought that up just because there's lots of double standards. You know, I had a chick at work. I won't get into it too much for time's sake and whatnot, but like she liked me. I politely declined and she was like consistently talking to other people about me to the point where like I had several people a day coming up to me talking about this. And more or less, it comes to find out she's done this before, starts rumors about people, just, you know, shit like that. And it's like the whole line about the shoe being on the other foot. I was telling all my friends, like, can you imagine if this was me doing this to, you know, this other girl that work, that we work oh, with? Yeah. I'm like, yo, I'd be fired and hung out front. Oh, yeah. HR would be up your ass. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's like, you know, that the double standards exist on both sides, and it's crazy. Yeah, like, you know, I'm not saying that just to, like, bad mouth her. I wish her well. Hopefully, you know, right. she, she found somebody, you know, she's happy. But I just feel like the situation on her end could have been handled better. That, that's no, all, definitely, that, definitely. That's all I'm saying. You know, yeah. I, I didn't even, like, really bad mouth her on the song or try to play her. I didn't mention her name or nothing. It's just like, I just, I'm just, the way I'm coming across is, like, the situation could have been handled better and... Also think about, you know, what if the the shit was flipped, you know? Oh, exactly, yeah. So that's pretty much the point I'm getting across, and I'm sure there's people out there that have probably dealt with similar thing, like just like you, just yeah. Like, just like you explained, so, you know. I got you. I wanted to talk about the collaborations on that tape. Um, so wait for you. Is it how do you pronounce it? Is it like smooth pock? Uh, smooth poke. Poke. Okay. Yeah. So you want to talk about working with him? Yeah, well, he's another one that I went to school with, just like Donnie. Um, you so know. you met Donnie at school. I think you yeah. talked about it a little, but kind of go in depth about him. Yeah, as so well. me, Pope, Donnie, we, we all went to school together, um, Hammond High School in Columbia. Um, so yeah, uh, met Pope, do like other mutual friends and stuff. And same with Donnie, met, met them. And, we, and it's crazy because we all wasn't really close like that, but we just knew each other or, you know, we see each other in passing. And, you know, dab each other up, you know, and just keep moving. But it's like music kind of brought us all together. You know, it's crazy how that works. Like, it, it, that's how powerful music is. It's like, you know, especially when, when you got the same drive and same passion as somebody else, y'all got the same mission. Like, it's crazy how that brings you close together, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm just I'm glad we was able to make it happen. You know, I've been wanting to do a song with, with Poke for a minute. I've done a whole bunch of songs with Donnie, you know. Um, you can look. My whole catalog, you know, I definitely got a few songs with him, but I wanted to do a song with Poke for a long time, you know, I've been seeing him, he was on this grind the same time as me, um, so he's doing this thing, I think he just dropped like a single pack not too long ago. Okay. Um, so yeah, definitely get, give him give him a shout, you know, and check him out, he's definitely got some dope stuff um, out right now, and he's definitely got some stuff coming out soon, um, but yeah, he was able to make that happen, um, I just wanted to do something, I just needed somebody just to cover like that one portion of, of the track, and I just handled the rest. So, you know, he, he fit that vibe perfectly, you know, and, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. So, you know, I'm just glad he was able to hop on, you know. And Donnie, of course, hopping on um, the one joint, I Do It For Hip Hop, which is, you know, it's a remix of a Luther's joint, I Do It For Hip Hop, they dropped um, back in 08. Um, and also had my man uh, Molly King on there as well. Yeah, I was going to have you mention him. Yeah, man. So I, I met I met Molly at um I met Maul at a showcase in Baltimore, actually at Oxygen Lounge. Um, he was performing, and you know we just linked up. We've been cool ever since. So, and actually, I, I think I shot a video. I did a cameo in one of his videos too last year. He still hasn't put. I don't know if he put it out yet or anything, but uh, maybe he's holding on to it. But um, I know uh, we just been tight ever since though. So it's like. You know, if we need anything, you know, we just hit, hit each other up, you know, boom, right there. So I'm just glad he was he was ready to go, and, you know, he did his thing, you know. Hell yeah, man. I am going to pause. Okay, now I want to quickly talk about the Georgetown Freestyle music video that you did, as well as I saw Illustrated Entertainment spelled as The Illust. So mm. is that, like, what you've used for all of your music videos? Yeah, well, I mean... That video was like maybe the first time where we actually had, you know, illustrated entertainment on there. Okay. But like I said, you know, I'm trying to, you know, build that up eventually as a label and stuff. And, you know, that is part of my publishing. So I just want to get that out there. Um, but yeah, it's, I kind of like 
kind of altered the spelling of it because it's not spelled traditionally as, as illustrated is like usually it's spelled with a U. Right, right. That's why I wanted to point that out. It's a take yeah. on like the illus, you know, because I call myself the illus and stuff. Yeah, like talk that. about where that comes from, you know, maybe like where the influence from the illus comes from and everything like that. Well, earlier, you know, I mentioned like it's a state of mind, it's a mentality. Like it is, I mean, in a way, kind of used for like branding purposes and, you know, it might sound, you know, a little cool on the song and stuff when you say it but at the same time it is a mentality it's a mindset like i said earlier with kobe bryant and the mamba mentality and yeah stuff, you know so you just gotta get into that zone and you know you just gotta own it man you just got you gotta become that i just meant more or less like were were there people around you when you were younger that used that phrase a lot and well stuff like that well also like yeah i mean i heard like my deep you know they they would say like i, I, was, a, yeah. I was a big my deep guy coming okay. up too you know so uh r.i.p the prodigy you know what i'm saying um he was actually supposed to be at that Raekwon show that mm. Billy and them opened for too, but that was like right before he he I think he died like a couple of days before that. Wow. Yeah, so um yeah, that that was crazy. Um but yeah, you know, shout out to Mob Deep, R. P. Prodigy. Um but yeah, like I remember like Mob Deep, they would say they the illest, or you know, you hear Biggie like Biggie Smalls is the illest, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. I gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I thought. I just, you know, thought like, you know, for people who can't put that together, I wanted them yeah. to like kind of know where it comes from and oh, everything yeah. Oh, like yeah. that. Oh, yeah, for sure. appreciate that. Um, You know, just, just listen to other artists and stuff like that. Like, I know it's been said before, like, I, I mean, anybody can call themselves the illest, but it's like, no, like, I got to make this mine. You know what I'm saying? Like, other people may have said it, but I'm making this mine. It's not about, you know, I don't care who, who said it first, I'm going to say it the best. And I'm going to own it and I'm going to make it mine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Um, with the illest summer ever volumes one and two, they both had a Grand Theft Auto Vice City kind yeah. of style cover. So I wanted to talk about, and also you sampled like San Andreas and stuff like that in a couple yeah. of the songs. So is like is Grand Theft Auto your favorite uh, video game franchise? It, it's one. It's one of them for sure. It, it definitely had a big impact, you know, growing up. I'm sure for a lot of kids growing up in that era, you know, what I'm saying, um, especially San Andreas. You know, that that was like a big game at the time. Um, you know, first black leading character in the Grand Theft Auto game and stuff like that, and like such a big map and so broad, and you know, you had Samuel Jackson doing the voice in there too. Um, Do you think that that's the best Grand Theft Auto game? I think. Well, we gotta see what what six looking like first. Yeah, I don't mean as far as like graphics and all that. I just mean like story and overall, just like significance. I, I think it's up. I think it's up there. It's in like maybe top two yeah, right now it's I, like the argument is either san andreas five or four you yeah. know what i mean five is definitely up there five five is up there four four was cool um i like v- vice city too yeah you vice know? city's got just like that's probably like one of the funnest games yeah. like it's just got that you know it's i don't know if it's because where it, where it's set or any, you know yeah. it's got a good vibe and to actually it. that's where the, the location is for grand theft auto 6 but it's gonna be a more modern version of vice city right based I've... off based off modern miami and stuff okay so that's gonna be real like i always wanted them to go back to vice city and do like a modern take on it you know just like they did with you know uh grand theft auto 5 where they did a more modern take on los santos and stuff yeah i think there's even some like easter eggs and stuff like that that they threw in there oh, for and sure and i'm sure you're probably gonna see um easter eggs in vice city or, or six as well you know from vice city yeah what are some of your other favorite video games um this could be like from when you were younger as well as now shoot man, i played a lot of video games <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> like i said it goes back to the wrestling like i'll be here all day you know um but yeah, like uh, I really like the Batman Arkham games. Like you can really dive into those. Like I feel like you know I mentioned earlier, Batman is one of my favorite comic book characters, favorite superheroes of all the time. Um, I really feel like those games captured the true spirit of Batman better than any of the movies did. Okay. Probably just as good, if not better, than the animated series um, from Batman. Um, yeah, I, I just feel like they they really did their homework and really took their time on that. You know, uh, I mean, the game, it looked good with the graphics, the mechanics were good. You know, like the fighting style was crazy because at that time you didn't see any type of combat fighting style like that. You know, it's like, wow. And then, you know, in the last game, you got to actually drive in the Batmobile, you know, and yeah, it was just crazy, man. So it's like the villains, all that is just like, it, it was just crazy. It was just like, wow. Hell yeah. Like you're just immersed in that world, you know what I'm saying? And, and you see that now with the Spider-Man games now, too. You know, like they they really they really did their homework on that. So. Hell yeah! But yeah, as far as like um, going back to GTA, 
like, yeah, like, that that had a big impact on me, you know, just playing those games as a kid, had a lot of fun. Like, I didn't really spend a whole lot of time doing the story mode. I was just driving around, just <laughs> Hell yeah. causing havoc, yeah. you know what I'm saying, C- making a mess. Committing and and war crimes. <laughs> man, I, I was a bad motherfucker on, on them joints, man. Red Dead, it gets even worse. I don't know if you play that oh, yeah, shit. You I, get I, medieval on people in I, Red Dead. I play Red Dead, too. Like, yeah. Red Dead was the shit, too. And I think that's, I think, canon with GTA, I think, as well. Yeah, um, they did. I know, like. I know they made by the same company, but I think they might be canon as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Red Dead, you know, Bully, that was also made by Rockstar. Oh, shit, yeah. You actually have to go be in the school and stuff. <laughs> you know, that, was that little, game was funny. Yeah, compared to like GTA, that's a little more PG 13, but. Definitely. But it's, it's, still, it's still pretty raunchy, though. It's still pretty yeah. crazy. A um, game based on bullying, like that, you know. Yeah, in the school, <laughs> and you actually have to go to class, too. Yeah, yeah, no, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was good, but, you know, GTA, it was. Those are fun games, man. I'm looking forward to the next installment, whatever they got. But, you know, I just looked at, um, I don't know. It, what's funny is I wasn't even really looking to do a mixtape and turn that into a series. You know, it's just like I started out just doing like one particular song because at the time it was like 2020. So we were in the pandemic. You know, everybody's in the house and stuff. Um, you just had a lot of downtime just to think about stuff. So it's like, I feel like. Two two kinds of people came out of the pandemic. Either it became either you became more of a hustler, and it made you work even harder, um, or you just became more content. And I'm sure yep. a lot a lot of people you know they're sitting at home getting fat, eating, binge watching their favorite shows on Netflix. Guaranteed. You know, or you could have been brainstorming and drawing up blueprints about how you're gonna execute, how you're gonna start this business, or maybe write songs if you're an artist, write songs and stuff, you know, or make beats or something. So it just gave me time during that period just to kind of think and just come up with new ideas and stuff. So really, I was just, I was just going to start doing like maybe drop a couple songs, do a couple remixes and stuff. And that's how the Ice Cream Freestyle came about. Okay. And then we dropped that, you know, just remix of, um, you know, Raekwon's classic Ice Cream Joint. You know, I, always, I, I, love, that, I love that beat, you know what I'm saying? I really... I love, I love all, all the stuff the Wu-Tang does, like their whole style and stuff like that. Like a lot, I mentioned Biggie, like that Ready to Die was like cinematic. Like a lot of Wu-Tang stuff, you know, they add like a lot of cinematic skits in there too from like old Kung Fu movies. Yeah. You know, so like when you hear the illest summer ever, you know, I, I'm able to get creative with the, the Grand Theft Auto influence, you know, from the covers to some of the skits. Like I didn't really go too much into the first one with the skits. You know what I'm saying? I was just like just focus on just putting the music out there. And like I said, I wasn't really planning on doing the tapes. It, it just came about like that. I was just going to drop these separately, you know, maybe week to week or something like that. Maybe every other week, you know, just kind. Of, and that was like at a time when I was kind of getting my foot back into the music and just going at it full steam again. Because like I said, I, you know, I was homeless for a little bit and I was trying to get back on track. And you know, I was just waiting for me to kind of get my foot back out there. Um, so yeah, we did the first one. And, you know, it, it got some buzz, but like I said, I was working a full-time job, so I had enough money to, you know, get the thing done and recorded and mix and master, but, you know, barely enough money to kind of market and promote it, you know, otherwise would have did bigger numbers. But, you know, it's still good. You can still listen to it. It's still up my SoundCloud uh, right now. You can check it out. Um, but then the second one, I was like, well, if I do another one, we got to go bigger. You know what I'm saying? We got we to gotta aim higher with this next one. And even though I really like, I really love, you know, what dreams may come, you know, I really like that project. I'm proud of that project. I'm glad I did it, you know, and even though I had plans to follow up, maybe doing a third installment of the illest summer ever, um, eventually I might do, I might do one, but maybe might take a different approach instead of doing like just SoundCloud, we might put it up on all streaming platforms with all original beats, maybe. Cause I know okay. some artists they do do that, you know, like yeah. Jeezy, uh, he did Trapper Die 3 and he released that as an album, you know what I'm saying? So he made that transition from mixtape to an album, you know, and the same thing with Fabulous, he did uh, Summertime Shootout 3, he released that as an album, you know. So we, we might do something with that in the future. Um, but yeah, I, I just felt like at the time, you know, I feel like I'm kind of just above just doing like mixtapes. I feel like we can aim higher because mixtapes, yeah. it's only so much you can reach with a mixtape. And, you know, especially if you rapping on other people's beats, you can't really get that far in market and stuff like that. You, and you can't release it on like Apple or Spotify, you know, they'll take it down immediately, you know. Right. So SoundCloud and YouTube was the way to go for that at the time. But still, I was able to use what I had at the time, just saved up bread. And I was like, yo, we got to go hard with this next one, 
you know what I'm saying? So I said, I just planned, I said, well, since we had like a Vice City type of vibe, since the first one was kind of had that Vice City vibe, I did have that one line with Tommy Facetti, you know, in one of the songs. Um, it's a famous line that gets re reused over and over again. You know, it's like he, he's getting chased by police. He's like, and the police officer's like, don't make me run. You make me get all sweaty, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know, Tommy Facetti, played by Ray uh, Leoli, who just passed away too, R.I.P. Definitely. You know, so he, he definitely played the show, that role too. Um, he, he yelled something back at him, you know, got back at the cop. Um, so that's probably like the only like skit or reference from the game that's on the first one. The okay. second one, you probably may have heard, we went all in. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And pretty much just like a whole story looking back at it. Like it really is like a whole story. Like from the first track, Coast to Coast, it talks about me, you know, it opens with me and a guy who's playing my manager, you know what I'm saying? And this is like right before I get, you know, I met CEO. Okay. Uh, my manager at the time. Um, so he's playing like my manager or agent, whatever like that. And he's telling like, look, wake up. You're about to miss the flight. You got to go to Cali, you know. And I actually was planning on going to Cali that year too to kind of promote it and stuff. But okay. COVID was kind of picking back up. So it kind of put it kind of put things on hold for minutes. I was like, oh, man. So it would have been dope, man, if I could have went out there. But Eventually, eventually, you know what I'm saying. So I gotcha. But um, so anyway, and that skit, that opening skit, is based off, you know, uh, Biggie and Puff skit they did on Life at the Death, uh, going back to Cali. Okay. It's the, it's the opening skit uh, right before um going going back to Cali starts. I gotcha. You know, so we basically just kind of did that, but put our little spin on it, and you know, it worked out. It worked out perfectly. You know, you know, the beat starts, and then we're off to the races, and so it starts with me going to Cali making moves, and then, you know, then you get into the Grove Street cipher, you know. And, again, you know, another reference to GTA and San yeah. Andreas and stuff. And that's featuring Biz Vino, right? Biz Vino. I don't think we've talked about him yet. Uh, that's that's another guy I went to school with, but I went to Northwest. No, uh, no, he didn't go to Northwest. He, But we did go to school together. We went to middle school together. We went to Kingsview Middle School together. Um, but uh, he went to a different high school. Though. Okay. But we did go. To, we we know each other from school though. You know. I got what I'm you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I remember when um, when I first started rapping, like he was one of the first people to, like give me props and stuff like that. And um, I, you know, I just never forget it. Like I remember the first raps, first song I put out. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't even think I was really even that nice <laughs> at, at this point. <laughs> but you know, he gave me props anyway. I mean, I was nice for the time. You know what I'm saying? But looking back, I'm just like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you know he, he gave me he was like one of the first people you know gave you props and stuff like that you know and we did like a number of songs together and stuff so um you know wherever he's at you know i just wish him well and you know appreciate him for you know coming through you know doing this thing like he don't really do too much with music nowadays but i'm glad i got him on that track with donnie because actually the three of us me him and donnie we actually put our own show together okay um yeah we put our own show together promoted it came out of our pocket and we did like a show at uh savage hall you know in the neighborhood somewhere where i used to live at when i was go back when i was going to school at hammond um so we did that had, we had a few other artists come through to kind of fill out the time and stuff and uh yeah just had people come out in the neighborhood and, and yeah we just survived hell yeah so yeah you know I, I was glad i was able to get them on grocery cypher and you know they killed that shit you know that that's probably one of the hardest tracks on that joint um, again, you know, had like the CJ coming at the beginning, like, oh shit. Here yeah, we go again. yeah, that's the classic. You know, it, it set it sets it off. You know, I, I got to perform that sound stage too, you may remember. Um, so yeah, man, uh that was a crazy track. And then, you know, it gets into sorry and that's sorry and then, and so on and so on. Guess the rest of the rest of the uh tape carries on and you know, you hear more references and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then gets to the final track, uh Sing About Me, which of course, uh, it's a remix of Kendrick's Sing About Me joint. Um, so I just kind of take that and spin it to my own. And I was like, well, at the time, it was like a lot of rappers that was getting like gunned down. Yeah. At one point, you know, like Nipsey and like Pop Smoke and Triple uh, X, Tentacion. Like yeah, all, it was, it was happening all close together. I was like, well, and I know there's a certain part in that Sing About Me song where it's like a gun goes off and stuff. So I was like, well, maybe I could tell a story around that. And, you know, it's like, this kind of closes out like, well, I mean, either you can interpret it as, well, maybe I got popped or something. Or I'm just like putting awareness out there. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. And also like a friend of mine who also did music and stuff, he also got killed too. Um, 
uh, by he was also gunned down in, in his house. You know what I'm Damn. saying? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So shout shout out to Millie Baby R.I.P. Um, yeah, man. And he he was like he was nice too, man. He was on his way. He was about to put out a tape, and right before he he was about to put it out, it was ready to go, and it was like then he got popped. So you know. Um, so yeah, isn't it just like? <clears throat> mm-hmm. I got you, man. Yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to talk about this. I think it was the first video. I don't know if it's the ver- very first video on the channel or if it's just the first one that you kept up. Uh, been thinking of you. <laughs> that's the oldest one, right? Yes, that's one of the oldest ones for sure. Um, yeah, I remember when I did that. Uh, that was off a mixtape I did a few years ago called Soul Food. You know what I'm saying? But that was like one of the leading singles off of it. You know, and I was like, before I was Tim Lewis, I was Timmy G. Okay. Know, just like <laughs> Kendrick Lamar used to be K Dot. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, that was like me kind of like rebranding myself okay. um, as Tim Lewis. And like, and also it was a chance for people to see me in kind of a different light. It was like, like okay, it's like a slow joint for the ladies. Like, we got the girl with them and stuff like that. They want like a little first date, or whatever. So, you know. And you kind of hear, you kind of see, like in the beginning, the opening, it's like me and the barber shop kind of recapping, with, you know, my man's the barber, about w- w- what's going on, what happened, and then you know the video takes place. So yeah, we shot that. You know, it was real cool. You know, she was real nice. Um, it's kind of awkward. She had, she had her boyfriend with her <laughs> at the time, so I was like, but he was cool about it too. You know, he, he was cool, supportive. So I was like, cool. He even had the Xbox, you know, you know, the two K <laughs> and all that. So I was like, hey, so. It was cool. You know, I like how that turned out. But, you know, um, I feel like since then we just elevated and we just gotten better, you know, with video quality and stuff like that. So, you know. Gotcha. I always, I always remember that that, uh, that video, though. Yeah, man. Um, one of the last notes I have is uh, I saw you've done uh, the Illust Vlog sessions. Yeah. I was curious, is vlogging something you plan to continue with? And also, did it feel weird vlogging and watching that footage go back? Because I know anytime I've tried to do it, it's been like so cringe for me to watch myself. Even more than this. Like, this doesn't bother me to watch, but when I try to do a vlog and watch it, I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, I mean, well, the thing I learned is uh, when you're doing this, when you're in this field, record everything as much as possible. Right. You know, I, I know it's not easy because sometimes you get sidetracked with stuff, but yeah, just try to just pull out your phone, just start recording stuff, you know, just day-to-day life stuff or, you know, just I could be in the studio or, you know, at a show doing some behind the scenes, behind the curtain stuff, you know, interacting with Jay, you know. I actually was thinking about doing like maybe a little quick vlog I could put on my reels or something, you know, recapping like um, – yeah. Pretty much this whole summer, basically, you know, like from Summer Jam to uh, the showcase I did in Miami to, you know, all the bar, you know, all the way up till now, you know, so I, I might, I might put something together. We might put that out soon. Cool, man. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, but it's important. Just it shows people your progress and what you got going on. You stay current. That's people inside get to know you. Um, so, yeah, you know, my assistant, she actually brought that up. Because before, I would just use my YouTube, just put, like, videos up, you know, and it's rare. You know, you don't do a whole lot of videos unless it's, like, necessary. So, yeah. you know, my, my channel was kind of dry for a second. But, you know, she brought it to my attention just put up some vlogs and stuff, do a couple of those. So, you know, we did that. And it was like, yeah, and had a good good reception from it. You know, people were, was responding. So it's like, okay. So I kind of took a break from it for a little bit. But like I said, you know, I want to kind of get back into that. You know, and, you know, show them more of what I got going on, like in the studio. But for the most part, if I do vlog or something, like I'll just post stuff in my story or something. Like if, if I got stuff going on, you know. So yeah. So for people that's following me on IG, you know, just tap in my story. You know what I'm saying, and check out my stuff I got going on there. Um, but yeah, and um, that's about it. I mean, I know we didn't. Do did we talk about the video, the Georgetown freestyle video? Uh, yeah, we did. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, and then that's out. That's out too on my YouTube channel as well. You can go check it out. <laughs> you know. Yeah. This is the last thing I wanted to talk about. I saw you've done some like kind of comedy skits on Instagram, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. So, like I said, it's just something that you know my management team wanted me to do, just to kind of you know show people you know, my personality and stuff like that. And yeah. as I mentioned earlier, we were talking about trendy stuff and. You know how you can't really jump on every single trendy bandwagon, but sometimes it's necessary to kind of help market yourself and promote yeah. yourself, get yourself out there, right? So, 
you know, I, I did a few of those and uh, people was responding to those, you know, and it's just like that, that was just it was just fun to do at the time. So I don't do a whole lot of them, but you know, when I feel like I'm in the mood, I just do a few of them here and there. Are there any other content creators that you like or that kind of inspired you when it came to those videos? Um, I don't know about inspired I me. Mean, I kind of like just do my own thing. You right, know what I'm but, saying? but is, is there any you like to watch? Because there's a lot of funny ones out there now. Yeah, yeah um, I don't. What's, what's this dude dude name? Uh, Fontaine. I can't think of his name. Um, he does a lot of funny videos too. I okay. Just, I just follow, may, matter of mm-hmm. fact, let me pull it up because I just followed him. Um, I know Trey Rags. He's one of dude, them. Dude, yeah, that yeah. dude is funny. Yeah. Long Beach Griffey. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Griffey. That's another one too. They get um, so out of pocket, but it's, like, also some of the most accurate shit. That's what's so weird about, like, the offensive comedy thing is, like, yeah, it's offensive, but it's true. <laughs> you know, some yeah. of it is very, like, exaggerated and stuff, but that's the whole reason for the comedy. Yeah. Oh, it's Richie Fontaine. Okay. Richie, yeah, he does. Sounds familiar. Yeah, he does, like, a lot of uh, funny skits and stuff, too. Okay. Yeah, I think I've most definitely seen him. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's him, Trey Rags, for sure. Like, Trey Rags is killing it right now. Hell you know yeah. Like, he, they keep fucking, like, banning him, though, don't they? And, like, yeah. taking his shit down? Well, I mean, he, he stayed, that's why he stays on YouTube. Now. <clears> like, I got gotcha. you. I remember he started on TikTok, and then he was on IG, too, but they, both IG and TikTok kept banning him, so he just moved all his stuff to YouTube. <laughs> He's so. one of the funniest. Um, I don't know if you know the YouTuber, I'm Dante. Mm-mm. He does reaction videos and stuff like that, but okay. uh, there's there's like several channels that have made compilations of memes just for this dude to react to, mm-hmm. and they threw a lot of the Trey Rags in there. So like that's how yeah. I heard about that dude. Yeah, I mean, look, it's all about um, my assistant too. Uh, she brought this up. She said it's all about just finding your niche and what works. Right. You know, so even for people that like me that are pursuing a music career and stuff like that, sometimes. You know, it, the music may not be taken off, so you got to find something else that will get people to attract. Right. So I think, like, DC Young Fly, like, he started out as a rapper. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. And, you know, he started doing, like, the Vine skits and stuff and, you know, doing a lot of comedy. And, you know, and that started taking off for him, and that's how he got on Wild and Out and stuff like that. So, you know, and that, it, it paid off for him. So it's like he only, he only really mess with music no more. Right. You know, so it's all about just finding what works. Like, um... A lot of people don't know this. Like, you know the actor Makai Pfeiffer? Uh, the name's familiar, yeah. Like, he, he was in a bunch of movies. Like, he was in 8 Mile. He yeah, po- okay. Okay, he was in uh, Soul Food and stuff well, like Who did that. he play in 8 Mile? He, the dude with the dreads. He played a future. Gotcha, gotcha. Who, who, was okay. actually, who was actually based off Proof. Yeah. Um, Eminem's man's. Gotcha. Um, I know who you're talking about yeah, now. Yeah, so when he started out, he actually wasn't, he was actually wanted to be a, a rapper at first. Okay. But. Only reason he got into acting because his brother brought him to an audition, mm. and he killed the audition. They wanted him to, you know, play the role, so they cast him the role and stuff. And that's how he got into acting, you know. Gotcha, so, man. So yeah. Hell yeah. Um, that was all the notes I had. So is there anything else that you want to talk about? Anything else that you need to announce? I know there's no like real shows coming up yet, but is there any music that's getting ready to come out? Um. Well, I mean, I, I was talking with my team about maybe doing like a project at the drop at the end of this year. Um, this is the EP, like not a full album, because I just feel like at this point, you know, we're not ready to do an album yet. You know, okay. we're still building up the foundation, feel, still building up the following and stuff. And you know, every show I do and every new single I put out, like I can see like the following is growing, like more people are reacting to it, responding. So uh, we definitely on, on a good pace. So I just want to keep that momentum going. But I feel like with an album, I need that to be special. You know, you want your debut album to be special. You know, you want everybody to check it out at the same time. You know. Um, so yeah, we we just hold off on that, but just focus on the EP, and it has to mean something too, you know. Yeah. So, like, I kind of got a title uh, for it, you know, and I kind of got a couple songs. You know, maybe you might hear some of the songs. We might put Forlin on there, maybe put George okay. Sanford Freestyle on there. Maybe it's like two bonuses and just add some more new tracks that nobody's heard before. Um, so we're still playing it out, but I know for sure if I was gonna drop a project, I know I definitely wanted them two on there for sure. Um, I just feel like a, a full album a full lp just wouldn't work right now you know what i'm saying because like i said we're still building the following and you know and the album's expensive as hell you know to yeah put out too like just not just like production wise but promotion as well you know you gotta think it's a, it's a lot that goes into that so i just want to really take my time and i feel like ep it's kind of like an album but it's a short album you know what i'm saying and you can still like do a lot with that 
know what I'm saying? And it's just, it gives you a reason to put out some content and put out whole compilation tracks without just wasting, like, singles and stuff. And, yeah, like, and don't get me wrong, like, you can put out a bunch of singles, but it's like, I, w- I want something to show for it, you know? Like, let's, let's put out a whole project, that way everybody can just come to one place, you know what I'm saying, just check this out. Whereas, like, you put out a bunch of singles, it's all scattered and all this stuff like that, so... I got you, man. Um, that was it. So if there's nothing else, man, I think we'll wrap up. Anything? Well, I appreciate you having me on, on the show, man. And uh, def- definitely a good talk. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you go on my YouTube channel. Check out the Georgetown Freestyle video. It's doing numbers right now. Yes, it is. Um, you know what I'm saying? We got definitely got more vlogs on the way. And uh, make sure you hit up my Instagram, man. We got some more content we're going to be putting up there, too. And, uh, and, don't, and don't be shy, man. You know, let me know. What y'all want? What y'all want to see more of? You know, if you want to see more vlogs, uh, if you want to see more funny skits, more reels and stuff, or if you just want more music, you know what I'm saying? And we definitely gonna give you more music for sure. Um, yeah, definitely check out the new EP. Uh, just be on the lookout for that. Um, like I said, later this year, maybe early 2024. I'm still undecided yet, but I feel like the title. Um, I'm just gonna hold off on that for right now. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Just just to see how things go with, with the songs and the direction yep. where I go. But I do know it wants to I want it to be like I want it to mean something, you know what I'm saying? Just to kind of culminate like my journey so far and where we at. Hell yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's what I got going on so far. And uh, like I said, Georgetown Freestyle, the video out and also it's also out the audio versions on all platforms as well. Make sure I go stream that, man. Hell yeah.